make the Australian accent a bit more cinematic because no one wants to be like, oh, give me your diary, guys. You, you <laughs> I'm going to the servo and he's singing, bro. Let, let, me put, let me put this out there real quick. If a Filipino team does not integrate Neon in their roster, they are not the true Filipino squad. Okay. Yeah, we, we, have, to to talk about, we have to yeah, talk exactly. about T1. Hold on. Oh, my God. Give me the happy gas. Oh, this team is killing me. And you could actually concuss through walls as well. So if it lands on the ground, then the radius that goes through the wall could actually hit somebody in that radius on the other what? side. The it's, ability is sick. It's really strong. Yeah, I love it. It's so really much. strong. It's yeah. so sick. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to Valorant. It's our second show for 2022 for the week of the 9th of January. I'm Mitch Leslie here, joined by Van Silly, who's still a little bit under the weather, mate. How you doing? Not bad, not bad. I'm about to put in a cough drop. I'm just checking on Amazon where my next orders of cough drops are coming, but doing pretty good. I actually wanted to thank all the people that are currently tuning in live already on the dot at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time while the VCTs and EMEA are currently underway. So we see we see where the loyalty stands. So thank you so much for uh, for listening and watching with us. Yeah, loyalty. That's exactly what it is, man. Silly. Very good. Uh, in fantasy, yeah, I mean, it's been interesting to follow like the, cl the closed qualifier stuff happening over in Europe, especially seeing like, you know, if these projects, these ambitious projects like OG and stuff are legit again, or if they're just going to be absolute dog shit, we might not even find that out here in the close quarters. <laughs> What's up, Anders? How you doing? I'm sure you've been keeping an eye on things over in Europe as well, man. Uh, and things in North America, I'm sure we're about to start heating up to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well, keeping an eye on everything. Still slowly but surely hunting for a team. So you, you know how the uh, free agent life goes. So what you got going on so far? Like, who, who are you talking to? Who's talking to you? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I'll just, just leak it all right now. <laughs> Mate, he's coming on the show to fill in for Mitch Man and you try and shake him down for info. We get enough value out of the man Anders on a regular basis. True, true. This show, though, it's like fucking, it's like the Hotel California, isn't it? Once we get you in here, I reckon Ian just gets his little tendrils in you, you know what I mean? Like, hey, hey, Anders, we need you for this show. Dance to me, boy, and Anders walks on in like, yes. <laughs> Check it any time you like. But you could never oh, leave. Exactly, exactly. That's right. Yeah, we're talking about some fucking Valorant. So today, all right, so a few things to talk about. Um, our topic list isn't that extensive, but I think that there's a lot to talk about with each of these topics, right? Obviously, Neon has debuted. Uh, obviously, the first Filipino uh, operator. Uh, I don't know if I've ever played a Filipino character in any video game, so that's fantastic. She is pretty crazy uh, early on. Uh, seemed very, very crazy. Now, less crazy after it's sort of been announced that she'll be tuned a little bit here, but exciting. It might make the stinger valuable again. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. That's definitely a personal anecdote. We'll talk about some patch notes as well because um, there are some, obviously, a new skin set, which looks awesome, but some key map changes as well. Uh, to Bree specifically, that's one we're definitely going to try and take the opportunity to discuss. And, of course, Roster Mania, if you can call it that now, is still underway because teams are trying to finalize their rosters before, especially in North America. Yeah, that, that one open qualifier. The one chance I'm yeah. like getting the challenges happen. So motherfuckers be getting their ducks in a row real quick. So that's uh we'll talk about all that and more on the show today. Uh, but first, it's not quite a round table, but it's definitely gonna be a forum of uh, a forum of foreheads here to discuss this uh this new operator in the Mine's game. Covered. So uh, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, all right. Uh we bring out of the show, of course, returning uh will be Kaplan, we had on the show last week to talk a little bit about formats and stuff. So great to have Kaplan here. How you doing, mate? What's going on, guys? Good to be here. What up? Is uh, that a new screen are... you got back there? Is it is it a new screen? Is that what you said? Yeah. Uh, it's uh it's a secondary PC setup. Look at this guy. It's, uh, Man, it's little, the same fucking big baller. Setup, it's the know? same screen, exactly. mate. Yeah. What's up? I saw it last week, Vans. Same damn thing. Yeah, I know, but like, I, I I feel like I didn't see that PC in the back. <laughs> Okay. My giant head was covering it. <laughs> we we'll have we'll have Dax come on when we can get him connected in. It's like you know, it's a little complicated trying to patch him in from the literal Philippines. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll check in with him once we get him. Can we talk about? Let's just talk broadly uh, about Neon here, guys, because obviously there was an influencer tournament where all the popular people got to got to play her and Vans. Uh, I'm an influencer. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you a, a niche internet micro celebrity? Is that that's a new tagline? S super niche. <laughs> super fucking niche. Guys, you know, micro celebrity is actually a term they use to describe influencers. It's fucking it's amazing. <laughs> like, less than 20k followers or something. I don't know how it works. Anyway, let's fucking oh, talk about this me. agent. Because, first of all, 
uh, we kind of got a bit of a taste of, of what we should expect, right? Um, there was definitely like a go fast element and like a we knew based on data mining of people like Ness, of course, who, who does our, our graphics that, you know, this, uh, this operator was coming from the Philippines. D broadly, does this answer uh, a niche or something quote unquote missing from the game? Or do you think it's more of like, more of the same sort of untradeability, like maybe some sort of slightly more concerning direction in, in, in operator design. What are our thoughts here on just like the high level of Neon? That's, that's exactly what I wanted to ask. Like first impressions before you actually saw the gameplay of it. What'd you think about Neon's concept into the game slash meta? So coming from collegiate, like I've been exposed to a billion different games, one of which is R6. And so when it got data mined that Neon's code name was Sprinter, I was like, oh, sick, we're getting Ash in this game. Fantastic. Mm. And so I started thinking like more on an abstracted basis, like why was Ash so broken in R6? And is that going to be transferable to Valorant? Is it something that's going to be a huge issue? Because like the whole, the whole shtick in R6 for people who don't know is uh, all the different operators have a certain speed assigned to them, and Ash is One, a two three, or three. Exactly, yeah. and Ash is a, a three-speed operator, so she has super high mobility, great rotations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. However, the thing that really sort of defined her and made her insane is that she had a certain weapon that had access to an ACOG scope that, when combined with the mobility, just became completely over the top and ridiculous. And so, I don't think that there's really a great way for us to look at sort of this high mobility sprint mechanic in a vacuum and say, okay, how powerful is that in isolation? Um, it's going to be really interesting to, to look at me on going forward. I actually have been putting together a YouTube video over the last couple of days where I strictly look at like, how do untradeability mechanics work in this game? How do uh, like accelerated rotations work in this game? And how does that affect agents play rates at the highest levels and how neon might fit into that dynamic? And mm. it is, it's interesting because the, the question really boils down to like how untradeable is her actual untradeability mechanic? Because is that slide mm. a jet dash? Certainly not. So mm -hmm. uh, like where does that actually fall in the spectrum? Yeah. Your thoughts, Adam? Yeah, I, I'm, I, 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 I love her. I think she looks, looks to be well-designed and actually pretty fair. I, I don't really see any untradeability. I, I don't, I, from the gameplay I've seen, I, I don't expect somebody to you know, take a fight and then activate sprint and then slide away and really get out of an engagement in any way where at least at the pro level that that actually makes her untradeable. I think, mm -hmm. you know, even in terms of like the combat mobility, uh, sl sliding in, it's a really committal move. You you don't have an out yep. after you use it. You're you're just committing to an extreme version of a wide swing. You know, uh, you only get one uh, without getting kills. Um, I think she fits this nice niche. I, I hope Jet gets nerfed, and it, mm. if Jet gets nerfed, it's nice to have finally another agent that's like, I'm super insane at making space aggressively. I mean, Jet Stash does a bunch of different things, but I think Neon and her her slide and her kit, it looks like she'll be able to make space like Jet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I definitely think Sprint looks like an insane ability, you know, just in the sense that. There's so many different situations where you can sprint and it, it can do a lot of different things. It can help you rotate quickly, avoid a Sova alt, uh, reposition, and so on. Um, and it can be scary to see, like, well, what if that sprint messes with the rotations and sort of timings of how agents move around the map? But there's so many agents that have, you know, abilities they can use globally, like Astra. There's Chamber and Yoru who can teleport across the map and Omen, including his alt. So I think it's... Um, whether or not it's balanced, I don't think she's the first to bring it in mm -hmm. or, or is really going to be the one to break the game with it. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Is the sense like there's not really the same modality to her sprint as Jet has to her dash? And I think Correct. the problem that people had is that no, Jet could commit rapidly to an engagement, but we know that wasn't really how she was fucking using Tailwind. It was so she could get out and not be traded. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can say the same for Rainer's Dismiss, right? Correct. And uh, I think Anders made a tweet the other day sort of saying like, it's, it's crazy that people aren't talking about this. This form of power creep is what we should be much more concerned about. The fact that you can, you know, you can you can hold an angle and just get out with one one peak and, and not really be punished by people trying to like double swing you or, or trying to mess around like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, her, like, I don't know how hard how hard is it, Vance? Here you go to to shoot at, um, you know, a neon that's sliding. Like, how just how quick does she come in and how hard is that to sort of 
if you're holding an angle and you, you, she comes in with the fucking you know with all the bells and whistles on yeah. how easy is it to sort of at, to at a high it? level it's it's easy uh at my level it was a little bit difficult but i think once you get into like where you're at radiant or like just in professional gameplay you're expecting to know where to to aim the corner because not only that like her her dash right now or her sprint it's very loud so you could actually hear her coming uh from the <laughs> fr uh, from a distance right even if she turns it off you kind of know okay well i do have a neon in my vicinity and if she potentially still has a slide then i could pre-fire the corner or pre in the corner differently than i would uh, when i'm placing my crosshair for a tight angle hold uh, on somebody that's just going to go for a jiggle peek so i think understanding that kind of mechanic it's not going to make her that um broken and, and it, she's not going to be an agent in my opinion that is going to be replacing a jet because when you're looking at the agent composition and synergy, like you said here, Uber, she has no way of like trying to get a pick and escape right away. She's going to be in a, in a position that she's going to get traded right away unless she's able to do a very good stun with her uh, her lightning strike. I think it's what it's called. Relay so, bolt. Relay bolt. Uh, relay bolt. There you go. I'm still trying to learn their uh, their ability names. But uh, I'm as fucking cast, <laughs> exactly. So aside from that, just the uh, just the agent in itself. I think she's still pretty decent as a duelist, but if you're going to be in the current meta of a team that plays still with a single duelist, then I don't think that this is going to be the single duelist that you're going to use, which is why I think it's very well balanced with the kit that she has because she doesn't have any flashes. So you're going to need somebody else to uh, support her in entries, for example, like a Sky or a KO. If you're going to be really trying to run a single duelist to try to support this type of agent for an entry. So can we, let, let's keep moving then. Uh, let's talk about Relay Bolt here as well. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like a concussive effect that bounces. Correct. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So so it bounces off once and then wherever it lands on the second one. So the first contact that it hits, then it shoots on the ground and it concusses that area in a radius. The second uh, bounce that it hits, then it shoots a second one. And you could actually concuss through walls as well. So if it lands on the ground, then the radius that goes through the wall could actually hit somebody in that radius on the other what? side. Yeah. It's actually... How strong is this? The ability is sick. It's really strong. Yeah, I love it. It's so really much. strong. It's yeah. so sick. Yeah. For, for huge nerds, it's like exactly. paradise. Because for all of these like main corridors that you have to exit type bottlenecks, and there's like a close left or close right where you're like, complete jerks love to judge this yeah you can clear both of them along with deep lines like the example i keep using when i talk to people about it is like b main on split there's that immediate left like triple stack tetris whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. where people will like sit there with a judge or whatever you can hard clear that with a stun and clear default with a sing singular relay bolt assuming that mm -hmm. you have the right lineup mm -hmm. that's sick to me like that is just so cool yeah and you you notice that you can hit yourself with it, and on the beginning in the beginning of the video, you saw how after the first bounce it was just going outside of the map. So if it doesn't yeah. hit anything on the second bounce, then there's no second concussion. Okay. Um, but but overall, I think when I was watching um, uh, Ra Raiku, uh, and I forgot who else I was doing like the the influencer um, presentation on Neon, uh, <laughs> dropping names, they were. Um, they were mentioning that you can do like some nerdy stuff of like bouncing one of the relay bolts from like middle of B market into B main of ascent, which then also means that if you're going to be one of those, you know, the, the type of duelist that's going to be forcing out rotations because of your sprint that you could actually uh, use a little bit more of that map without being punished that much with these fast rotations, then you could actually have like this, this, uh, support duelists is like to call to help your team get into a, a site is yeah, this better it. strictly than a, a molly i uh, sorry repeat that is this strictly better than a molly oh nah i don't think so I not, don't not think strictly so. it serves like they both serve like soft zone denial purposes but like in terms of how acutely it punishes people it's very different in terms of the pace at which you're going to want to use it a lot of the time, it's going to be extremely mm -hmm. different. Like, this is a... I use it when I'm op executing. Mm -hmm. there, you can use it very much so on the fly. Like, you could be coming off of, a like, a fast cancel of an execute, go to the other side of the map, immediately sling this sucker and go. A lot of the time, if you're going to use a, a molly for a similar use case, you're, like, sliding into your corner, lining up your, like, 
pixel perfect lineup, slinging it, waiting for the arc path for it to hit sight. So like it it leans into her high mobility and her propensity to want to go fast and cross the map <laughs> and do fancy things. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, Amali can kind of hard deny space, right? You can't get through a choke point or you can't defuse for a certain amount of time or like I'm thinking you're coming into a scent B, you molly out logs. Somebody's forced to swing. If they stay in logs, they're going to die. Whereas if you stun logs, you know, the the, the teammates of the player in logs could buy time for them to stay alive in that spot. Like you could still okay. be in space while stunned. Yeah, okay. So it's not it's it's not gonna force you necessarily away from that area. Also, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can't line it up from across the map. So it doesn't sort it's of nice. encourage this kind of play about playing, you know, remotely uh from the actual, you know, the, the, the plant or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you fire it in the air, it eventually fizzles out if it doesn't come in contact. It won't just yeah, that average Jonas, fall. don't fucking don't you bother sitting in no my motherfucking lobby trying to line this shit up, fam, because that ain't it. <laughs> uh, let's talk about fast lane here because um, when when I first saw it, I was like, "Does she get a speed boost in there, or is she just supposed to sprint in there?" It looks strictly. It looks like um, a double, I guess, a two pronged phoenix wall without curve ability. Correct. Yes, no. Correct. Yeah. Right. I call it a tunnel smoke, just for my own sanity. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Super simple, straightforward. Um, it gets deployed very similarly, like to the old viper wall, though. So. If you're aiming towards the air uh, and it goes into a structure, so for example, you're looking at the wall on top of an entrance uh, of a site, then the the both sides of the wall are going to stop there. But if you're able to aim towards the end of the wall, the distance is actually quite far of how you could deploy these fast lanes, as probably this example will show. Um, yeah, so huh. there you go. There's literally a, a projectile with it. Correct. Yeah, like, I need... mean, sh shout out to Ryan, who's like footage we're showing, because he went through like a billion different just like validation tests on all of these different abilities mm -hmm. I, it would have taken me another week or two to realize that there's a projectile <laughs> associated with this ability mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it looks like if there's no ground then there will be no wall right mm -hmm. as was demonstrated on like the sort of the the, the fucking target rail yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah but it'll go across on the other side so um you know it'll yeah. like go up boxes like a phoenix all like it'll it'll climb up verticality okay. and go back down it's pretty strong. I think it's uh, it well, it's it's pretty strong in the sense that it kind of gives you uh, or the opponents like okay, well, if they're gonna throw those 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 fast lanes, then they're most likely gonna be running in between those walls. So you want to try to contest yeah, it if you want. It down, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like a lot of players when the when the when the agent first came out, I was like, well, fuck, I know exactly where she's gonna be, so I'm just gonna go in between the two walls and contest her. But uh, I think there's a lot of mind games you could actually do now as just Neon or as a team to really try to throw off your opponents and um, not force them to basically battle you within the fast lanes. So it eventually it could become like just a free take on that area and then you give it up and then you play Pulse Plant or whatever it is. So there's, um, there's a lot of fun mind tricks you can do with it uh, in due time. This is the ability that sort of strikes me as what is going to define a decent neon player versus a great neon player like if you look at the sprint and the slide and the relay bolt like it's all super sexy exciting shit and then you're like you can also throw up two walls smile like yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. you don't look at it and you're like whoa this is crazy but in terms of how it synergizes with the rest of her kit and like the more tightly nuanced elements of gameplay that it gives you access to Using this correctly is going to make or break a lot of phenomenal neon players. Yeah, and teams, I think, right? It's like a ability that really asks for set play for a team to synergize with it and use it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just I use this for myself how I please. Like it, you really want to involve it with Correct. everybody and set play on a team level. Because you can only use it once, right? So yeah. the relay bolts, you could buy two of them. The fast lane, you could use once. And then you have uh, basically those single two walls. What do you do with it? And most of the times, it's just like you want to try to do a set execute with those walls for now. Um, if you're looking at her kit and it's the first time you're observing this agent uh, without really thinking about theory crafting, it's like, okay, well, block out two lanes. What can you do after that? Phoenix Flash across the other side if you're running dual, double duelists. You could actually get um, Sky sky Flashes to come up through the walls as well. KO to help out at the same time too. Or just clearly just run it through. Like one of the simple ones is, again, if we're going to talk about split, is 
Now, sometimes you're using like a Viper wall to cross into B or using a Siege wall to cross into B. Well, another simple one, another option that you have now is using fast lanes to just cross into that B site. You just got to be wary of, of the left side, though, because you're kind of covering yourself from that trash area, too. Okay, you can use the relay bolt I was talking about earlier. True, um, true, true. Yeah. And that's the thing. <laughs> and that's the thing. Fast lanes, flashy and cool, but... I, I actually disagree with Anders just saying, for me, uh, a, a player that's going to really tr uh, differentiate the skill level of what Neon can bring to the table is really uh -huh. the relay bolt, how you're going to use that uh, individually as well, right? Because you're looking at all these other agents where, like, if you're a, a able to get escapability with a Jet or Arena, but you're running a single duelist to try to get entries for your team, then how are you actually using the relay bolts to actually clear the corners, get... Um, value out of it and be able to escape out of that battle right after um that is going to be probably that um that interesting conversation you're going to have and that the skill level is a quite high to be able to use this agent mechanically quite well and efficiently uh, as an individual duelist so the strategic nuance of the wall aside mm -hmm. um let's talk a little bit about overdrive then her her ultimate i found this really interesting because it, it, i think it differs it differs, I guess, with Bladestorm for like a, a bunch of reasons. Mm -hmm. But first of all, Garen is a low time to kill game already. And the introduction of like a, an, an LG, something that requires more tracking, I find mm -hmm. absolutely fascinating. Let's talk about this. Let's get first impressions. Um, if, if you guys have used it before, is it really that strong? Is it maybe sort of balanced? Where, mm -hmm. where do we sit on that? We'll start with you, Vans. We'll go down the line. Uh, strong as fuck. Uh, it's actually so good. I'm not that good with it, uh, but any type of player that that is good for like um, tracking, uh, for example, LG players in Quake, Overwatch players or whatnot, uh, it's going to be a very, very strong ult for you because pay attention to what's at the bottom too. You see that that meter that's down there that kind of kind of looks like the um, the poison for, uh, for Viper, yeah. right? So when you ult, it automatically replenishes at 100 and it counts down. So the duration of your ult is until that goes down to zero or until you die. And you notice Doesn't that this determine your sprint as well. This bar it refreshes your sprint. That's basically what it is. Oh. It's for your sprint, basically, right? So, so the, it refreshes your sprint, and every kill that you get, it replenishes probably like a quarter of the bar or like a, a sixth of the bar. Sorry, uh, so that you're still going to continue to have an ult until that meter dries down. So you can pr pretty much keep it for the whole round if you're able to continuously get kills, uh, which is so actually there is reset quite good. potential like Bladestorm. Uh, yes, if you recall, because there's no uh, it, it, it hits exactly where you aim at. There's no drop off. Uh, there's damage drop off, at least from distance. So if you're okay. uh, at the longest distance with the with the with the I like to call it the finger blast. But if you're actually uh -huh. using the overdrive at the furthest distance, I think it takes about 16 hits for you to be able to kill somebody. And if you're close range, probably like five or six, but it counts down very, very fast. Like you're melting your opponents. So if you're not fighting it well, if you're if you're not. Uh, cracked in terms of aim, you're you lost the battle automatically. Jesus. Okay, this is Bala uh, for those who aren't looking up at the top right here. Mm -hmm. So right, so yeah, all right, guys, you you get your sprint refreshed while you're using. You can theoretically sprint and just finger bang your way through. The entire <laughs> map. Sounds yep. Sounds pretty good. Yep. Yeah. It's uh it's quite good. And um, there's no there's no uh damage multiplier if you get a headshot on the ult. So whether you aim head, body, legs, it's still the same. You input the same amount of damage depending on your distance. So oh, that's perfect for me. I fucking shoot toes for days. Uh, there you go. So if if you're actually pulling this ult out, just aim body like the the biggest hitbox area, and you'll still do the same amount of damage. And it's what do you think? I think it's it, on its face, it seems quite good. Whether or not it will be good at like top top pro level is a little bit more up in the air for me. Because, like, she gets to move, she gets to slide while she's using it, but at the end of the day, like, it's a semi-fast damage over time. Like, it's not the craziest time to kill we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And at the pro level, are you just going to get one-tapped when you use this? Because there's... Exactly. There, there, exactly. There's, there's a trade window. There's 100% a trade window when it's this ability. Correct. Um, so I could see it being crazy. I could also see it being not so red-hot because I'm thinking I'm remembering this correctly, but you can't jump and use your little finger blast at the same time. You um, can only sprint and slide. Yeah, if I remember the concept of what they were saying from the Valdez is that since it's electricity, like you, you, you have to you stay have to be grounded. grounded, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, so. cool. So given that... What the fuck? 
the the like what shit justification. Get the <laughs> fucking shooting electricity. Science. Again. Why are we trying to apply like real life physics to this situation? Mm. People people are just too traumatized by the jumping right click classic. That this That's point, true. Just like, well, and just something <laughs> like it just shouldn't work. I almost brought this up when when Uber was like, "Oh, is th is this just like comparable to jet knives?" I think that this is honestly like the most underappreciated biggest differentiator between the two. In one of them, you have a vertical axis that you can play with. Yeah. This one you don't, and that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I think I think it's a, a really fair alt. I think definitely the general reaction people have had is an overreaction to me. I think that alts that give you weapons or damage are the best alts in the game. I personally think Sova Chamber and Jet are the best alts in the game. Mm -hmm. I still, I would, I would say this is a relatively good alt, but I don't think it holds a candle to those. Uh, a Jet can double updraft, and you just see her head appear over a giant box on ice box two seconds of the round, and she just one taps you, and that's it. Dead. And you're just like, okay, I'm dead. And <laughs> well, I'm like sure the, the friggin' play. the ascent, <laughs> the ascent. A sight defense, baby base, me fucking, yeah, blade yeah, Exactly. Sword. And I think if you look at this in a vacuum of, okay, you're fighting somebody, there's counterplay, right? A pro can just one tap you and that's it. They won the fight. They're going to be able to do that quicker than you can, you know, laser them down. Mm -hmm. And even if you, the, the idea, right, is that you have crazy mobility on Neon, right? So you're, you're just really hard to hit and you're moving around and tracking with your movement and LG and lightning, whatever it's called, uh, finger blasting well, we're somebody down but, <laughs> but like, that scenario involves you being out in the open and then you're neon you don't have a dash or a dismiss you can't get out after that so i think people look at this and they're going to be taken aback by how often it just ends up being a one and done where you you run out and you're being really fast and you kill a guy but then you just get traded and of course you're not going to peek in and out with this ability right like if you if you just like tightly peek a vandal and fight them with this who's gonna yeah. win uh yeah so i th that the, the fact that the way you want to use it puts you in positions where what are you really gonna do after the first kill except for just probably die to the other guy i think people will be surprised by how often so, that's happening i want to very quickly touch on a point that bala covers in his tweets then is this a la chamber a la jet like a an economic boon then is this the kind of ultimate you want to say for eco rounds to try and have a bit of extra punch yeah uh, he seems to think that it's he, it's not that big an impact, right? But it seems mm -hmm. like you just don't want to be chancing things against fucking, uh, you know, like one tap kill weapons. Like even the fan up close will rip your dick off if you're, um, if you're, you I think, hit um, head. jet knives and chamber all are really good on gun rounds. That's one part of help that, you know, how they help econ, right? You can use them on eco rounds, but you can also have sort of a broken buy where the next round, you know, you can almost buy, but okay, sweet. The jet can drop somebody a rifle and then use knives. Chamber can drop somebody a rifle, then pop bolt. I think this ability looks good on eco rounds, but I don't really see the neon being like, I'll drop you a vandal and I'll just pop all and play the round with my mm -hmm. it, it doesn't really seem like it works in the same way. Maybe on defender side though, right? On attacker side, I, I see that it makes sense, but on uh, that, that doesn't make sense to, to what you're alluding to here, Adam. But I think also on defender side, uh, especially in um, not only in the, in like, hey, let me buy and I'll play my, my, my ult, but also on eco rounds. So we're talking about Blade Storm. Uh, the headhunter from chamber, also with the tool de force, and you also have um, the uh, the the overdrive from uh, from neon. So that's a lot of abilities that are quote unquote free. Looking at the ults, seven rounds, eight rounds in, when already a lot of these matches in the latest meta, you're seeing a lot of teams trailing behind four zero five zero until you finally get into the round of ults, and then you finally have a game in your hands to move into the second half, and it becomes very very competitive. So I think that this could still be one of the, those things, sorry, to look out for in terms of like econ um, ultimates. And I think Mimi also shared some similar thoughts uh, to that as well, um, to see that it could get dangerous looking at the amount of money you're able to save and still potentially win the round um, by having just these ults available yeah. for you with yeah. these agents in your cop, right? Yeah, I think, I think the one caveat I'd put on that is that with Overdrive, no matter what kind of round you use it on, you're, you're probably going to have to have some sort of plan around it. Like yes. you're not gonna you're not just gonna like pop overdrive and run a default or just like correct, pop correct. overdrive and just like play your site on defense. So mm. you you have to kind of incorporate it in a 
yeah it's more limited in the, it's, w- the it's way you can play the round definitely not like an early round kind of thing and unless it's like one of those hey let's explode into b link from mid yeah. like you always do with like jet dash or or flashes or whatnot right but you could always layer the neon ult maybe like mid round or something like that when it's like a 3v3 totally. and you're retaking sight or holding sight so slightly different yeah. angle that's going to marry all the stuff you're just talking about i think that it's a set play ultimate that's way better on defense because you can abuse corridors yeah your your overdrive your full emperor palpatine unlimited power it has full bullet pen if yeah. you yeah. catch attackers stacked pre-exec in a bottleneck i'm thinking like all right we we're playing fracture i'm just gonna yeet myself uh, a main yeah. and i'm gonna find four people there and i'm just gonna laser all of them it's the yeah, m4a4 yeah. of valorant yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Cool. that's me dying Good. so there you go you're, see there's you're bolstering my one and done point thank you vance there you go. There's 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 there's, there's a window, uh, an opportunity for trading. I get one, I die. Hey, I got I my mean, one. Fucking you know? peak with 11 HP. I don't know what to tell you, homie. Listen, man. I had the alt. I had to go crazy. So I was trying to build content. That's the content we got. Um, average Jonas has tested a little bit of uh, what you could do with this the, the, the dash. Uh, obviously, you know the guy's very good at finding broken stuff, uh, and there was some some pretty nasty stuff here. So. You know, like there's like a wall ride, I guess, yeah. variant with this slide. It is the slide that you have to trigger, right? But I mean, that's correct. I, I, that's this has no place in Valorant. I'm certain of it. <laughs> Speaking of content, things that shouldn't exist in the game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's at least it's at getting least, patched. Think, that's a good uh, thing. Yeah, exactly. yeah. they have speeded. They're like, have fun with that while you can. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's not too bad. And the, the thing too, the last thing to talk about neon for me at least to uh, <coughs> sorry mention how uh not not as broken you think she is with like now that she's allowed to slide is especially in her sprint mode uh and in her sliding mode she doesn't have her gun out so whenever you're yeah. sprinting both of your weapons are, are are in your pockets or whatever so you're just putting both of your hands out so you can't shoot while you're sprinting and you can't shoot slide, while you're sliding you can so he has his gun out the yeah. entire way across so, that wall <laughs> so like the first initial slide of when you're going into you know, onto the ground is when you can't pull your weapon out. But once you finish the end of the velocity of your slide, that's when your gun could come out and then you could start fragging. And because you're in that super slide, then your gun's already out at that point, which uh, demonstrates uh, as well in, in my 4K that I Not as flashy as what Jonas did, but I uh, it still showed like at the, the slide that I was able to avoid a couple of shots from somebody trying to shoot at me out in the open. Yeah. Like I said, like at a low level, it's going to be easier to like get away with it. Uh, but at the higher level, then you pre-fire the, uh, pre-aim that, that spot and you kind of like get, get boomed. Uh, you know how you get shot in Valorant and it slows you to a crawl. Um, does that affect you? Is, is it the same when you're sprinting? Do you just get like fucking stuck in molasses if you get hit by anything? Uh... The, the situations that I've noticed when somebody stuck in a da- or a, in their sprint is they died instantly because they didn't have time to pull out their weapon anyways. So by the yeah, time they realize it and they pull out their weapon, they're already dead because the, the pullout time, I think, is still quite slow. Very similar to like Yoru when you're coming out of an ult, depending on what weapon you have, then then it comes out faster or slower. Um, so it's very similar to that. But here here's an example of a regular slide, not an average Jonah slide, where I get away from it right here. <laughs> And then as once I land it, I'm able to shoot right after and get okay. that kill. You get hit, but you don't get stuck during the slide, it yeah. seems. Yeah. So you're you'll spin <laughs> Okay, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I used my kit so well. You saw that? You saw the double wall. I concussed right in there. It's like, oh shit, he's gonna fight me in the lane. Let me dash away from the lane. I was like, yo, joke's on you. I'm outside of my walls and I'm still gonna own you, right? I so. mean, nothing says mobility creep more than that little exchange there. Yeah, yeah, I've got right. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So it, it's a it's it's a dec- it's a good it's a fun agent. I think that's a, what a lot of people have been saying when they were playing this um, this agent. It's like she's really really fun to play, um, okay. but I, I definitely don't see her being like a must pick uh, yet going into especially these VCTs coming up. Yeah, well, I'm sure Scream is. I mean, fuck knows what who Scream will be playing. Probably he'll be playing Neon. Scream just needs to play whatever the. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whatever the, the the sickest fucking operator is at the same time, and it's like Yampi, you can play Killjoy, right? Yeah, you go do that. For me. <laughs> fuck around here. Yeah, very good. Um, all right, so we we got to see a bit of your experience. Obviously, yeah, we would have Dax on the show, and we'd have him weigh in on this because there's obviously the other element to this, and it's kind of cool mm-hmm. to have a, a, an agent that you know uh, represents you to some degree. Mm-hmm. Dax, I don't see you dyeing your hair like her anytime soon, but I I can definitely see how you know obviously there's a, a huge relate relatability thing with having 
someone of your nationality in game. Even if Sky doesn't fucking sound like she's an average Australian, she sounds like she's far from fucking Cairns. Like, oh yeah, boys, we're gonna do some hard yakka today. Oh, fuck me. Every time there's an Australian voice in the game, it's it's done. Oh, I, I I am told that like I'm sure her voice actor is Australian, right? But she, there's always a sense of like, make it more cinematic. Make the Australian accent a bit more cinematic because no one wants to be like, oh, give me a fucking durry, guys, you, you dickhead. I'm going to servo and he's singing right. Like, no one no one actually wants to hear that, but that's what most Australians sound like. You guys just can't handle the fucking truth. Can you so try, Mitch? Try, you. try Give me a give me a, a Sky fucking voice line under a Mitch accent. Uh, what, uh, shit, I mean, I play Sky. What's, uh, oh, you, 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 you want me to do, like, the Bogan accent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, uh, oh, like, well, what you think she should sound like if you need to have, like, a... Uh, an Australian agent coming into the game or any other game in the future. Like, oh, an easy man. one. When she's healing, she says, healing over here. <sighs> oh, yeah. Boys, healing over here. <laughs> it's time, you... I was trying to fucking, it's time to hunt, you bastards. <laughs> and bring, it, bring your guns. We've got some dickheads over there. Yeah, they're trying to run away, but they're all wearing thongs, so they're just fucking tripping themselves up. This is our chance to win the round, you pricks. That sounds like too long of a voice line. I'm going to need to hear some footstep sounds at some point in this fucking shit, <laughs> oh, no, no, you know? One of the interactions they have. You know how, like, the operators talk to each other at the start of the round? Okay, yeah, okay, okay, like okay. That, yeah. uh, okay, let's talk, about, let's talk about not me doing fucking impersonations. A um, couple, couple changes to Breeze, right? Let's talk about three key changes to the map of Breeze, which has always been kind of deathmatchy uh, mm. in a way. You know, the kind of map that... You know, a lot of these really, really long sight lines. So let's talk about this first, this 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 cave change. Mm -hmm. Spot the difference, chat. Yeah, what do you guys see, chat? What do you guys see? If not, I'm going to ask uh, Adam, what do you see in, in these changes so far in a cave? Do I get to go yet? Are we yeah. waiting on chat here? I see I know, a box on the left, and yeah. I actually see, a, a, according to the patch notes, although I wouldn't have noticed, a, a wider <laughs> into a site choke point. Yeah. So what so what that means exactly the the wider is like if you're looking at the wall on the right side because I feel like the entrance of the A site has been narrowly closed yeah it's um, narrow yeah but there there are thicker walls on both ends which then means that usually on the attacker side you're going into the A site if for example you're not playing against a viper or a sage wall there's just a, an opening you still have to gamble on a 50 50 looking a tight left or tight right to try to get um, the first pick if somebody is playing close. Now that you actually make the walls thicker on both sides, on that right side of the entrance, as you see on your screen, then you're, you're able to focus more on the left side uh, first as the entry, and then look into the right side after to clear the right side corner. So that allows a little bit more um, uh, openness, I guess, uh, opportunities for attack for an A site hit. Okay, were we feeling like this was a bit of an oppressive angle to play from beforehand? Do these changes really uh, alleviate that? Uh, no. <laughs> well, I mean, no, I, I, you, you didn't see you didn't see that many people just play like a one and done from that corner unless you were playing a viper, right? One one yeah. person that I think about is uh, is it's poise, right? That plays, or is it Superman that plays the viper on breeze, and he was using like the 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 viper wall down into into cave and then a poison cloud right at the entrance of like palm trees so you could dance around that area timing through the l drone timing through the darts and get a couple of kills into shop so i think he's one of those players that that uh, exemplified how you could actually play those those type of like 50 50 corners but if you're not playing a viper uh you're not playing that corner in most of the cases in my opinion unless it's like a jet dash uh, a jet opt to dash away in the end so it's a nice small change the boxes allow for a little bit of fighting towards the a side cave as well um, maybe more defender side pushes too, um, because what you can notice too is that they're, you're, let's say you're flashing, you're still able to get around the corner of the boxes before. Oh, okay. So, I mean, this one is pretty noticeable straight away. Mm -hmm. um, is palm tree different? Is that set up yep. different? Yep. Okay, but also this big ass container here. So the A site for defender options looks like it's been fleshed out a little bit because I don't, I, it's a terrible feeling. I, when I come to, I, I'm like rotating into A site. I'm playing Viper. I'm fucking using a useless wall at B site that doesn't catch anyone. And it's probably from a shitty YouTube video. And then I have to rotate mid late round uh, after getting yelled at by side chair that my wall is shit. And I end up behind <laughs> fucking boxes. And then I've just got people like, brah, 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 just fucking spraying me down because they know I'm stood behind these boxes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every time I try and peek, my head gets ripped off. So um, a little bit more, uh, yeah, options for defenders who want to like you can peek, I guess, above that container now. So there's like a vertical aspect to your peek. This seems quite nice. Sort of, yeah, yeah. It's um, 
like if you're on the top of that can g box right we'll just call it orange box for the purposes here because it's the only orange we see on the screen um i i try to look over it with like uh, against a viper wall you don't necessarily see the top of heads uh, that are trying to cross into the main site so for example right. if you're still throwing that viper wall and you're crossing into site uh it's still hard to 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 spot that but I think this orange box for me allows uh, definitely some more playability around like anchoring sites uh, a little bit more passively for that player in A. Uh, instead of being spammed on just a small box, you could actually play around and dance around a little bit more. So let's say shock darts that are coming out, you could dance away from that and still stay alive and, and whatnot, right? Fight left and right. All right, Waters, it's yellow, it's orange, uh, tomato, tomato. It's a shade of yellow. Um, it works. But I think oh, okay. uh, another... Sorry, uh, go ahead, uh, uh, Anders. Sorry, uh, you were um, saying something? Yeah, yeah. like, uh, that box, like, the, the king box that's been added, it's interesting, and, like, when I first saw it, I asked myself the question that you just answered, which is, like, can this see over Viper Walls? Because if mm. it can, the site just yeah. got absolutely shattered. Mm -hmm. um, even if you can't see over the Viper Wall, though, I think that it makes this site quite significantly more defense sided because whenever your viper fuel cycles down now you're contending with so many potential op lines that it's mm -hmm. it's disgusting mm -hmm. yeah. and mm -hmm. one of the changes on this site that i think has flown under basically everyone's radar and i don't understand how or why is that at i think you guys call it palm tree like that tucked Correct. corner along the far side of the pyramids yeah yeah that used to be a wooden box yeah and if you if you pull op fkfd ratios from that position preceding champions it was shit. It was like not not even a 50-50 spot. Who the fuck's spot? bringing up a cunting heat map for that? You're a cunting heat map. Every person's not doing that. Um, yep, that's Anders. I know, I know. I, 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 I have a problem, man. I get it. But that spot was complete dog shit because either you took the 50-50 outside of that corner or you went into the corner and just died to spam. Now that yep. that's a metal box, it is a survivable location. Specifically, mm -hmm. specifically if you're playing an agent like Chamber on that site, you have a safe corner now that you can currently camp, and you have access to not only all the other good op lines on that site, but you can teleport to them in addition to the three new ones that you sure. get because of King. Mm -hmm. So that's now the sauce that you get to play with on mm -hmm. that site due to the just two adjustments they made. If, yeah, if and I you can also repost up on that angle right as chamber if you if you show like between Madonna or the back of the site in the box, you can just turn up behind the fucking arm tree and shit Surprise. on someone. <laughs> Nice. I saw all these changes to A site and it was just an impossibly hard site to hold and I, and I was really mm -hmm. thrilled about it. But if you don't mind me jumping at the bottom of this screenshot here, the, the door on A can no longer be reactivated until it is finished opening or closing, right? You used to be able to just Huge. spam shut it if you were huh. standing on the stairs. Uh, I'm going to give myself one uh, entitled overreaction of the day. I feel like they ruined <laughs> the whole damn thing with this change. Like you made the A site stronger to hold, but uh, especially at a pro level, Brown Hall controls really popular you can drop right into mid you can kind of push into ct spawn and cut off the rotates yeah. and that door just makes you have this high ground that is just this 90 degree angle from where you're entering the site you can look out over everything and really the only saving grace was having a player on stairs just hitting door shut door shut door shut <laughs> over and over to stop the split and now they press the button and oh you had this sweet new container and stuff well too bad because now you can't keep the door shut and you're just yeah. going to get shot. So that door is opening often. and the player in halls can absolutely have an angle on the, the container player. Yeah. I mean, and if you look yeah. at the container, it doesn't really do you any good to hold door, right? There's mm. not a spot you can stand on that it's... where you're covered from door. If you're yeah. on the left side of that container, you're just in the middle of nowhere. So wait, are we now emphasizing this halls control much more than for defenders? It's, a, it's always been there. It, there was always some sort of a halls control anyways, and you see a lot of players that do late lurks as well uh, into the A-halls. I don't think it's it's that bad. I think the, the, the good thing about it, about the wall not being able to, uh, or sorry, the door not consistently go, opening and closing, is that person that plays on the staircase of the A-site that watches into A-tunnel. So I'm thinking about Asuna, for example, in all of his matches that he's always like spamming that door and closing it, which then renders the A-Hall's push or the A-Hall's lurk kind of like useless at that point. So you're opening that and you're allowing that to happen from the attacker side. On the defender side, though, yes, there's the yellow box, orange box, KNG box that's been added, but... I don't think you're always fully exposed into 
the brown halls anyways. So like if you're playing on the right side of the boxes over here and you're playing closer to that staircase from the orange box, then you could turn that into a headshot angle uh, against your opponent. So you still have an advantage. Uh, and they have to probably peek out a little bit more, uh, which then makes it more dangerous on the attacker side to try to get more control from the staircase side if their attack is not happening from a main. So there's there's still ways to play around it. I know that the spamming of it, I, I actually am from the school that I hate the spam of the door. Uh, it made okay. it so useless to actually get anything, any fun <laughs> out of CS like getting a player and you say that. The fucking, the door guy, the, the memes. Bro, I mean, Valorant is still trying to distance himself from that title, but I mean, I thought you were cut from stronger stuff than that, Van Sassi. Oh no, I hate that fucking door shit, man. I'm glad that that, that change happened. Um. And then the last thing that I really like uh, about the A site changes is we talk about the spammable uh, area that's been now modified, right? So you can play that angle by palm tree that's now not spammable. You can hide in that corner. But I also like that they flattened down that ground on pool side. Because if you're playing like Bree still, you're still trying to learn this map, is whenever you see a Viper Wall come up and people are starting to attack, most of the times at like platinum level, uh, diamond even lower then they're gonna start rushing on the other side of the viper wall out in the open and once the viper wall comes down you're kind of like forced to aim at headshot level by the pool by the ramp that comes up at the bottom of the ramp by the pyramid so there's a lot of little small angles that you had to micro adjust to to try to make sure that you land your shot uh, and it made retake games a lot difficult as well so now that you make it flat you're also now focused on just aiming really once one uh, headshot level uh, that allows you a little bit more of uh, of retake abilities uh, or capabilities as a team so i like that change too it's subtle um, but it, it will develop into a better like type of like site take site retake on the a site so i i i, I do want to give it some time for us to practice it and, and see what it's going to pan into but the my first impressions of it is that it's actually some good changes here on a site so okay let's 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 deal with this in net then kaplan door grievances uh, aside <laughs> how do you feel about like the overall uh change to breeze here just just across the board you know i i, I like them a lot i do think that the uh, a site was really barren and there was nowhere to play i'm terrified of the door uh, at this point. <laughs> but the hope would be that uh now you have to control brown hall Correct. You know, more intensely, but if the A site's easier to hold, you don't have to, have to put as many resources over to A site. Uh, I'm skeptical, but, uh, you know, I'll bite my okay. tongue from that onward. Um, and then I don't know if we're diving into the B changes a lot, but I like them. Yeah. I like them a lot as well. We have I think a, overall, these are good. Yeah. Do we have a screenshot from the B side? Because I think that's worth it. Scroll, yeah, scroll, yeah. scroll, scroll. While, while um, it scrolls too, I, I do I do want to agree a little bit with Kaplan as well, because the, the A site control uh, with the door... Now that you have to fight for A halls, then you're also most likely forced to put one player back in like the brown halls, which also dwindles down the amount of players you can have on defense inside here's, either sites. Here's my strategic freebie that I probably shouldn't leak, but I'm going to anyway, because <laughs> it's been a hot take of mine on this map for a long time. Yeah. Play it like you would a sent A site when you shoot the door. Literally open your brown halls doors and A site anchor at the start of the round and play it like a pivot location. Mm. Your your yep. rotator comes into deep halls and supports you, and you can play both a main and halls as needed. Yeah, so there's your fix. Let's, let's stay on this B this B image here because this wall towards the back of the site here I feel like it's a big change. Plus the two Huge. The, the box stack here at the back of Berlin we call you know I suppose. Mm -hmm. What? Okay, this is quite transformative I think for for the B site for for defenders. So I guess I, attackers are like it really. Let's let's quickly get some thoughts on this because sorry, Captain, we were supposed to cover this. Yeah. Go ahead, Kaplan. Yeah, yeah, I'll let no, you I, your first thoughts. I, I think it's... I'm not worried about it. I think it's a fortress, though. I actually really liked B site mm -hmm. as is. I, I think it was maybe a little barren, but one of my favorite sites in the game. And, man, that back wall area is just... Uh, on the right side of that screenshot, especially, I think is just insane. Adding that really lets an anchor make a lot of plays. And, you know, to keep feeding into this, there was a lot of solo B play in, in competitive play for Breeze. And yep. uh, sometimes they, you know, that anchor just kind of got railed. Uh, mm -hmm. If you do have to put more people toward A, maybe you have to fight for Brown more. I think there's a lot more plays that like a single Cypher or Viper can make. You know, they have more options on where they can be. They're not totally screwed by a drone or a good recon. Yeah. So I, I think it feels a little unnecessary, but having it be more soloable makes, I think it will make the, there, it'll add a little strategic depth to the game, to the map. Yeah. I wasn't. I just wasn't under the opinion that defenders were so oppressed on this map. 
uh, by uh, and on large. This, uh, yeah, I don't think it was too bad. On this side, As... it wasn't an issue. On A, it kind of was. Yeah. Sure, okay. Like like we mentioned, yeah, so hard to hold. Uh, yeah, I think I think in general, just in ranked games, anybody that's trying to like anchor out towards the A side, it just gets stopped by a viper wall, and everybody crosses in. You're just overwhelmed and not not sure what to do. On the B side, is like most players would play. Let's say on the left side of the, of, the, of the screen that you see right now, that's not being projected is that ladder area at that corner. Most of the players would play there as a viper or a cipher, and then. Once you get through the first uh, utilities, that, that slows opponents down on B side. You're kind of like boom there. And made, it made the retakes a little bit harder when you're trying to retake the site too. Uh, as I think people are still trying to figure out how to retake these sites. Uh, so adding these boxes and, and that back wall in the, uh, all the way in the back allows that anchor player to like dance around a little bit more from clearing corners of like all the mollies that are being posted on the ground and you don't get shot by b main so you have more player uh, more angles to play from and i think from the retake again adding those boxes at berlin wall allows you to basically um, dance a little bit more coming back from arches uh, to be able to help your team retake the site so I, could... I, I think it's decent changes I add one one quick thing that i'm not seeing yeah. until now when i look at the changes uh that uh, last screenshot on the breeze screenshots you can see that box. if you're a rotator actually trying to help your B site player, you actually have much less visibility on the choke point and the players pushing to the left and the ladder. So it it looks like more of a stronghold, but there's actually mm -hmm. a lot of cover there for attackers to run in. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people look at those changes and they're like, oh, B site is super really like super great for defenders. And I'm like, no, you have to play two people on defense there now. Because if you lose that site, at least how I'm seeing it, how the, the hell do you ever anywhere. retake this? How yeah. do you retake this? It is yeah. actual nightmare fuel. Like the the back site B wall, assuming that it's like a comprehensive exec and they like actually have site control, you, your flank is way worse. Your ability to be contained CT is just as good as it was before. And your ability to be contained connector is better than it was before because of the double stack on site. Mm -hmm. So like, how do you retake this if you lose it? You've got yeah. to actually hold this site now. Kind of, it kind of works both ways though. Coming back from the arches, if you're looking at that wall, you kind of get behind that wall yeah, on the exactly. retake and you slip through. So there's, there's both ways that it could still work. The, the, the whole back wall that's been added there is also spammable. So um, there's a lot of battles that can happen with that from scanning and finding opponents and spamming through the boxes. Uh, and the double box allows an extra spot on a pulse plant on the attackers to play by the Berlin wall and watch the back site. So there's. It's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be fun yeah. to watch. I think these are changes in the right direction. I feel that Breeze and Icebox are two maps, at least for me, going into 2022 that needed changes uh, into the map rotation. And I'm glad that we're seeing it from Breeze now. I'm hoping that we're seeing something from Icebox soon. All right. Kaplan, thanks a bunch for joining us, man. Uh, chatting to us about Neon, of course, uh, the Breeze changes. Right? It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, guys. Take care. And uh, of course, uh, we are going to go to a quick break, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to come back after the break. We're going to talk about uh, some of the developer announcements this week. New patch, the patch updates, of course. Uh, talking about the new skin line. And then a bunch of the roster moves here. So stick around, everybody. Five minute break. We'll be back with the second half of this week's episode of Valoranting. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody, to our second episode of Valoranting for the year. We just covered, obviously, the newest operator in the game and some changes to Breeze. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about what the devs are unveiling at this point in the year. So episode four, of course, of the new Battle Pass comes with a new trailer, uh, which looks which looks pretty sick. We can run it over our mics, I guess, and sort of talk about it. Um, for a game, you know, obviously, tax shooters rarely are as lore-dependent, I think, as many other games that have, like, single-player campaigns. but it's, I think it's a lot of fun to sort of see our agents interact and stuff. And it definitely fuels a bit more of the, I don't know, the immersion of playing the game. I don't know how you guys feel about this. I mean, and you're like a, you're like a, you know, you've got your heat maps and your first kill, first death, sort of, you know, stats <laughs> for all parts. Maybe you don't care so much. I don't know, but I love this shit. I love it so much. I mean, I, yeah, I'm a huge nerd who's like got his heat maps and his spreadsheets, <laughs> but like my, my background's all from MMOs, man. So like the, the lore driven stuff really really gets me going so to see more of it even in ways that like isn't necessarily super core to like a primary storyline i mean like it's a it's a goddamn killing robot that correlates to the most recent skin set the fact that even that sort of thing is getting lore is super cool mm -hmm. i just love it you know me I, I like watching this stuff i probably watched this like twice probably not as much as uh Simple did because Simple they actually just started putting a shit ton of screenshots and everything. I'm like, hey, did you notice this? Did you notice that? And then uh, I was like, oh shit, I didn't notice any of that stuff. 
So uh, there's there's people that have been watching this very attentively, but overall it's it's a, just a very entertaining uh, video to watch. And of course, talking about the uh, the next battle pass that's going to uh, be coming out is uh, is a nice correlation to it. Uh, and overall, how this works out, it's like okay, everybody's training. What happens next in that lore? What happens with with this duality? It makes you wanting more. It keeps you wanting more. Yeah, because obviously all of you know we've just sorry I, and i used the term operators instead of agent as was pointed out because i'm playing too much arc knights like <laughs> um, obviously so there's a there's a bunch of yeah bits and pieces that sinful is uncovering here it's funny that phoenix is kind of being styled as the main character because he's i don't know he's hot-headed he's unplayable. like very fallible <laughs> yeah but he's just he's literally fucking unplayable and then every other agent has better abilities than him in different combinations it's just kind of sad really but yeah um, what is it? What is the significance of Agent Eight's name being scratched out? Is it? Is that relevant to anything that we know right now? Or is it just just an Easter Is it egg? eight or is it eighteen? I think it's we, eight. Because we skipped eighteen to get to Neon, did we not? Uh, because if Agent I'm, Number Nineteen, right? Because if you're looking eight, at the eight. locker, it's O seven, and then it's scratched out, then O nine, ten, and what? eleven. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So I mean, I've I've no idea, honestly. It might be. Is that Omen? That'll be hilarious. Well, I mean, That'll we've got hilarious. like the kingdom folks, and then we've got people who seem a little bit more like evil aligned. So, like, could it be Reyna? Could it be any of those? Well, aren't the kingdom like, folks the sinister? bad ones? Or are they the because kingdom are the ones that are making the radiant eye, right? Or at least mm -hmm. they're manufacturing it, moving it around. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Omen was like traveling between the timelines and got stuck as a shade because of some fucking some failure in experiment you know what i mean got like stuck in between the dimensions hence oh fuck that all right i'm not doing this shit there's there a single thing known about stuff. agent double eight they ain't dead so that we'll we'll have to see i think there's a lot of uh valorant conspiracy theorists that are trying to figure this out but um maybe the next agent goes back into like an agent eight I've I've got to say though, like for a game that is really very much about the mechanics and not the story, Valorant are doing a, well, Riot are doing a pretty decent job of like adding a, a plenty of flavor. I still don't think the game possesses a lot of many aspects that appeal to like a casual shooter enthusiast. I think that's fine though. Uh, I think they're doing a fairly good job of this sort of slow exposition. And I guess someone fuck me, how have they found this? It who are these nerds? Like, yeah, this is worse than owns, me and man. my heat maps, man. No, Cipro <laughs> fucking owns. Like, I, I, Daniel, I just posted something in the, uh, in the, in the chat as well, so that we could actually put that up too. But like, even, even Cipro, uh, this was like October 29th uh, that put this in, uh, and they, they put the screenshot coming. I was like, look closely at the next agent. The shoehorn that comes in and the lightning that comes out of it shapes into like a number eight. So he's like, oh yeah, the next agent's gonna be number eight. But then the next agent already came out because they tweeted this out in like October, uh, October 29th, right? So is it Neon that's agent eight, uh, especially with the lightning, with her being fast? What really happens right now uh, in terms of, uh, oh. of all of this as well, right? So who knows, who knows? This is the equivalent of finding Illuminati symbols in like, <laughs> uh, <modern laughs> Well, no, I'm not gonna fucking argue. I'm not gonna argue with people that spend so much of the time unearthing this kind of shit with. I love know, it. With, with with glee. The, I mean, Jesus. I mean, to be fair, some of the stuff that Riot uh, does is very like very meta, very hard to decipher. I think we're talking about yeah. the the um the chamber cipher that I think they had to like give a hint, right? Had to give a hint to sort of uh, help people solve. Correct. That. Correct. Anyway, that's look. That's the that's the periphery. To Valorant. Let's talk about the fucking guns. The things that we put in our hot little hands and blow each other's heads off. Or if you mean just shoot people in the kneecaps. Here's the battle pass uh for episode four with some uh with some fun sort of skins here. Obviously the schema mm. uh line of skins looks uh, a lot of fun as well. Uh again, I don't know about you guys. This way I only ever get halfway through a battle pass, I've got to admit. It's pretty fucking tragic. I still get it every time though. <laughs> yeah, same. I just had to like purchase the the rest of my battle pass over the last weekend and grind the epilogue so I could get the radiant at points. Uh, and I finished it just on time yesterday, so I was pretty happy for that. Overall, though, I I, I kind of like the skins. They're not as, um, you know, I I'm not chasing after these as much as I would, for example, the porcelain ones that just came out in the last battle pass. Yeah, they were nice. Yeah. But the uh, the batters and the sprays are actually pretty cool. I kind of like this for now. Uh, from from what we see, so. A little bit of like chibi banners and stuff like that too, or chibi yeah. Let's banners, have a look so. at this tier forty-eight um, sage banner, like Dalton in chat has pointed out, because I haven't seen this yet. 
Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll get the, to that one, right? I think, like, the Schema Gun skin is the only one that I'm, I, I care for. The Hydro Dip one doesn't look that exciting to me. Um, <laughs> okay, Yoru with bad hair. That's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, look, there's a lot of... Um, a lot of teaser stuff in here. Okay, all right. I like that Sage one. Not too bad. And yeah. a new Karambit because F- FPS players love fucking Karambits, man. Yeah, I don't know why. Oh, now it's funny. now it's the uh, the butterfly knives started making a return actually in the uh, in, in Counter Strike in terms of like uh, knives that people want or just like vanilla uh, colored uh, knives too instead of being colored. But I I think overall the battle pass. I mean, for a thousand credits to unlock it and then uh, or Valorant points, whatever it is, and start playing and grinding it to get. <laughs> excuse me all these skins it's actually not bad to continue with that Listen, if you want to i mean put stick your nfts up your ass because this is already a play to earn economy baby <laughs> just fucking get on there and earn your battle pass rewards i don't see what the issue is we don't we don't we don't need the blockchain for that shit uh, okay so look um yeah that, that that's fine obviously there's a couple of bug fixes uh as well in this mm-hmm. patch announced out uh, this so we're now moving away from what was in the battle pass well, this is a fucking controversial one, isn't it, boys? So obviously oh, no. the cipher, the cipher cam <laughs> bug has been removed from the game. Yeah. It's now not possible to cheat. I, I, I love how how uh was it George? The 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 screenshots that he chose had to choose the one that had Joe in there. Oxen. Like oh he did that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did he have to crop it like that too? No, uh, yeah. that's what I'm saying. But you know, it's fixed. <laughs> it's fixed. It's all good. It's all good. It's in the past now. I'm happy that that's done because we talked about some good changes onto the map. But now that also, um, you know, the camera bug is out of there too. I still find that Cypher is going to be very important on, on a map like this, uh, especially with the door now being, um, you know, fully opened and before it can get fully closed. Well, don't worry. People are still so. going to play Killjoy and just execute on the back of uh, lockdowns, mate. True. Yeah, they'll, they'll go without True. Cypher. <laughs> True. So Cloud9 will fucking do that. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> so probably one of the, the, the most exciting ones um, yeah, first, first of all, before we, yeah, let's talk about this protocol skin model. Uh, all right, so I saw a tweet from Lothar, I think, saying that people would go nuts over the the, the skin bundle, and I think that's mm. pretty safe to say. Again, it doesn't include the vandal, as far as I can tell, which many of these bundles don't, which is Saj Magadge. But uh, we saw this, and all the Fortnite players, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all the Fortnite players thought that they were adding mechs into Valor. I'm like, come on, get a grip, guys. <laughs> Who knows, man. We got sliding, we got stuff that people are afraid that it's going to turn into Overwatch. Now it might be afraid that it turns into Fortnite. But no, the, um, the this is definitely a trailer to talk about the uh, the new battle, um, sorry, not battle pass, the new skin line that comes out now uh, that you could purchase. I think it's actually pretty cool, very Transformer-like. I'm wondering if there's going to be, like, now that the skins actually talk, uh, this one over here. Uh, I wonder if there's the going to be... Yeah, exactly. Is there going to be like a conversation between KO and the guns too? I think that'll be kind of fucking sick. My KO stocks will continue to rise. Damn, oh. dude. You're hey, like, dude, I'm you're a KO, one KO on like non gameplay <laughs> levels as well. That's incredible. Sorry, Anders. So it, it, it's funny you say that. Like, oh, now that they have voice lines and stuff, I, I'm coming at it from a completely different angle based off of tweets that I've seen from people. I wonder if they're going to add a, a UI option to shut off skin, skin sounds. Because people mm. were annoyed by the fact that they were making noises. Well, I mean, this goes back to the fucking. This goes back for the, to the Elder Flame skins. The mm. fucking the the Elder Flame Vandal is loud as buggery. It is so fucking loud. Like it sounds like. I think they might have had to to turn it down a little bit. Correct. It was like it was like screaming when you were firing it. Yeah, especially um, the operator. Uh, I think it was the was the main one when people were, were complaining about that one, and also the bug of like uh, once you pick it up, it consistently just screeches globally for yeah. the team so they had to ban that from uh from one of the vcts i remember, I remember scream uh, yeah exactly the so good old days yep yep already I, I don't know about you guys but i feel like the, the sound of a skin really affects my opinion of how accurate it is mm-hmm. like when i pick up the glitch pop vandal it's so rattly i feel like i'm just fucking useless you, you give and me I blast like... decks I, literally unplayable if, yeah. if i wanted my powerful bullets to sound like airy farts i yeah. would play a different yeah. game but the prime <laughs> vandal it's like oh, yeah. pew, pew, pew. it feels it feels more accurate based yep. on, which is obviously fucking nonsense but it's because it's just psychosomatic the sound of it feels snappier you know what i mean that's why the glitch pop skins are awesome but the sound just fucking drives me up the wall. i agree with you i agree with you because I, I i was getting the same thing off the glitch pop because the glitch pop's supposed to make it sound like you're shooting like an ar with your vandal so it, it sounds like it shoots a little bit faster so i was like why is it not hitting why am i not killing that person uh and also the the nerf guns too the blastics doesn't work but the this this the one that's about to come out the battle whatever it is 
Like they, it, it actually sounds really good when you're shooting the Phantom, and I was feeling like fucking crisp shoot, shooting that gun um, as well. We can play them. I think we can play the the voice lines uh, and sounds. You guys want to hear? Them. I think my have a mic. Do not fail. Here we go. Munitions expended. See, it's Effective. like a, a mix between like a laser. The fuck you say to me, you little shit! <laughs> <laughs> how are you? How are you not in fucking school? You kiss your mother with that mouth? It's called you. Ki it's called you kiss your mother with that fucking mouth. Huh? Huh? I look. I for one am ready to bow down to our robot overlords and just embrace these skins as well. That would actually be fucking hilarious if the guns actually spoke like fucking ninja. Holy shit. <laughs> Sorry, I've got. Uh, so, the backstory: I have my producer here, like, we need to, need to play this. Here's the real thing. Munitions expended. Feel snappy. Effective. Cranial impact. See, it sounds like you're shooting a laser. Yeah. New I don't know about the uh, the finisher. I don't need the. I think the best finisher is like the fucking comic book one where they get socked. Up I love that one too. I, I love but, that one too. But this one's pretty dope. It's like Robocop. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's, uh, yeah, it was, it was cool. So obviously, uh, for many people, that it maybe won't make a huge difference, I think. But those those voice lines, again, they can obscure other sounds that you need to rely on. So, um, you know, just as, just as you know, people wanting to be able to turn off certain sort of um, skin variant options that you unlock with Radionite mm -hmm. points, I think you may be able to be able to turn off the audio of the skin is is pretty important. Uh, or at least just like voice lines like that. It's fun, but it adds a decal to the screen as well on the left hand side, which, you know, is flavorful, but maybe not necessarily anything that occludes your, your UI any further, I guess, for like a competitive player can maybe be a little bit less than desirable, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it was fun. It's, you know, it's fun skin. Yeah, I'm going to spend a hundred fucking dollars on it and regret it <laughs> later on. I'm going to claim it on tax though. You know what I mean? When you work in esports, Oh, you can claim that shit on tax. It's for educational purposes. Don't don't audit me, IRS. Don't worry about it. The knife's also really <laughs> nice as well. So, yeah, looking good, looking good. We also had some actual patch notes as well. So, there are a couple that might be worth mentioning. Fuck, man, these guys get thrown by this knife. I mean, that's not yeah. conservation momentum at all. For fuck's sake, Newton will be turning in his fucking grave, right? <laughs> Unreal. These motherfuckers getting thrown by that shit. Actually, but that's it. Speaking of the knife, that that's one of the things that's been added to the patch notes. So realizing how difficult it is right now to currently knife people um, with left clicks and right clicks, they've changed the hitboxes on left clicks and right clicks. No so way. I think left click, I think that the hitbox of the model is actually 1.5 times bigger now. And uh, the right click maybe one times bigger. I can't really necessarily but that's remember. That's the purpose of this. Gotcha. Correct. So to allow mm -hmm. a little bit more of, uh, of uh, responsiveness into the knife. And also, I think what also changed into the knife is, for example, if you're knifing a door or you're knifing a sage wall, you know how sometimes you slice and there's like a delay into the responses of getting that slice into the door onto the onto the ice wall? Now it's a, a little bit more immediate. Apparently, it's like predicted or something like that on uh, on the client side. I mean... So that's going to help a little bit too. Uh, if it... If it... I mean... that That's actually pretty... Look, I think if it's... If it's got the potential for like, you know, someone like Katie and what he did at the the Pro League finals, you know, mm, that, that yeah, knife the was actually one. usable in that scenario, then yeah. I'm I'm sort of here for it. You know what yep. I mean? Yeah. I mean, so the Fnatic um, boys didn't have any trouble knifing during the world's group stage, so <laughs> 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 True. True. But that's it. So, so you see it right now there. Yeah, here's our here's our so so this is the the weapon updates. This is basically what you said, right? Uh, right click hitbox is, is larger. Um, left click hitboxes are larger than the right click and have a longer range. I, I, I'm a longer range, excuse me, to simulate, I guess, more of a swing as opposed to like a, uh, a just so it fucking hits, man. So you just don't swing it out in the open because you know how, like, even sometimes you're shooting models between the legs and it doesn't hit the hitbox, uh, with like a gun. And that, that example of what Penny did with the, the collateral kill that he got an icebox when Sage threw like a wall out and it hit her hand in the animation. One, that's fucking amazing that you're able to hit hitboxes on animations for, for the models. It shows how sick um, Valorant is. But now to make this for knives is... is uh, it was needed. It was actually needed to make the hitbox bigger for the knives. 
So can we can we just take a, a bit of a step back here, right? Because I want to mm -hmm. we're going to reopen the the discussion about Neon because we've managed to get Dax here. Obviously, trying to pipe him into our our convoluted system has has been a little bit tricky. Dax, oh, got on. Thanks for joining us, bro. Oh my God, guys! Thank you for having me. It it took an hour <laughs> to fix a few things. Welcome to you know the Philippine experience where everything gets delayed. Filipina time is you know, you know, you, you, no, Filipina time. You see, say we're gonna show up at three a.m. Uh -huh. and then you show up at four fifteen a.m. here at my time. So you know. <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. So thank you, that's, thank you guys that's, for having me again. That's a, that's a norm uh, in Vietnam as well, by the way, Dax. So like, whenever we have family gatherings, like, yeah, you need to show up for six. You're at the restaurant for six o'clock because you have to hold reservations, but your family don't show up till like eight o'clock. And then they eat like two bowls of rice and then they just fucking leave. They don't even stay for like the social aspect of it. It's like, oh, free food. I'm eating a meeting. Then. Sorry, the station sounds way fucking better, bro. If I can just mosey on into whatever social Listen. obligation i have whatever Dax, i mean we're just glad to to get you back on the show again man obviously uh, a lot of excitement in your region for uh the the newest sort of agent so i want man i want to want to get your get your take on all things neon but let's start and just talk about how important it is to actually have some mm -hmm. pinoy pride representing in uh in valorant man okay guys so let, let me put let me, let me put this out there real quick if a filipino team does not integrate neon in their roster they are not the true filipino squad okay that's, Ren Esports. That's, uh, that's factual. Absolute factual. Team Secret, Ren Esports, South Build, all of that. But in all honesty, we were just really, really excited to actually have an agent like that in into Valorant. It's such a big deal because Valorant basically is the renaissance of PHFPS because yep. we've all been looking for a system. I think I talk, tackled this about about you know about valorant before mm -hmm. and what i really remember about you know the css the r6s the overwatch this is the scene for sea kind of on the dead side too many gatekeepers too many things getting in our way they're not enough prize pool but then you look into valorant where we specifically have valorant challengers philippines and just everyone congregating to valorant to play in the fes scene it's not just on the vct circuit right in game changers i think we have the most teams in game changers whether wow. it's worldwide or sea there's so many squads playing valorant right now and then you cap it off with team secret last month having that playoff run the magic that actually happened the belief that we all had really bearing fruit and then you get something like neon where we're absolutely represented it's it's just incredible to see us having that kind of scene and the fact is we were able to talk to some of the devs on riot and there was like this whole riot for filipina side where they actually had people who had the filipino heritage mm -hmm. working on the agent of course the voice actress herself having the philippine age uh, that philippine heritage and it's just ridiculous also that when you hear some of the lines it kind of it kind of hugs my heartstrings a little bit because when i hear her say some of the words in filipino just like she, she shouts out her her grandma or her lola she she says you know her her old line those kind of things so saying it they don't they, they just don't have the the legendary filipino saying the quote unquote the putang ina you know i wish i wish they had that one <laughs> Are you gonna translate that for Dax, or are you gonna leave that one to our imagination? Uh, I think I think it it's hard to translate it per se, just what it essence is. But in cool. in literal English, it means son of a bitch. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I I remember yeah getting taught some swear words by Kuya Jotham when he's teaching me to play basketball at our church community, which was mostly Filipino. So yeah, I I. Uh, you know, I, I had a good brush uh, with that community as well. And I'm sure, yeah, obviously your region already uh, very much activated even before Neon was even in the picture, right? That, I want to talk about some news coming out of the Asian region, right? Because I think, you know, you might have some insight on this, Dax, talking about this Vision Strikers change, right? Hmm. ERX, pick up Vision Strikers, Lakia, departing the team. We're going to talk about this in our next section, but we've got you here already. So while you're here, what do you think about this whole, this whole mix-up? I think right now Vision Strikers is really just trying to focus on what they really want to do. Let, let's be real, the Lakia pickup never really worked. It just more or less screwed over the rest of the Korean yep. region and especially Newtern in, in essence. And then whenever they have Lakia, we know he's a great player, we know he's amazing, but it just never really panned out whether it's because the games they actually put them on, they just take the L or they just <laughs> never really had the proper plan for him in the first place. But them being under DRX right now, it does feel like there's going to be a lot more of that focus. So I, I really feel like for Vision Strikers this time, they're going to be locking in, pretend, uh, I'd say, a top 
their the starting five. They're gonna be working on that as much as possible, and they're here to make sure that they stay up top the scene because it. Looking into Korea itself, it's still that Vision Strikers role, which is the RX right now, and they're gonna want to find a way that they don't disappoint on the world stage this time because. Coming into champions, in all honesty, many people have had them as a sleeper pick, but they, they look really scattered coming into champions in itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was an odd decision, right? It seems like Lucky got taken away from the rest of the South Korean region and then wasn't used effectively on that Vision Strikers team at, at all, right? So obviously a bit of a shame. And, uh, you know, I think many people w were thinking that Lucky was supposed to be like a secret weapon, right, mm -hmm. for Vision Strikers. And then when they put him in, he just was seemed like, the round peg being jammed into the square hole like it didn't really seem to fit so that's a it's a real shame to hear about that one and uh obviously like you now again so restricted free agency is what he what he's experiencing now so we can he can look yeah. for new opportunities probably a buyout sort of thing which is fair enough because i'm sure for vision strikers it wasn't a small investment to get him and it's a shame it didn't work out six man rosters man they just fucking they just it just don't work, homies. I've yeah, but seen too many examples of this just being fucking dog shit. Why are people still doing this? It's not a thing, man. The thing, the thing is, is Lakia getting, uh, uh, being allowed to explore new options is also with the return of Zest into the lineup. So Zest comes back from, uh, I think it was medical leave. And what agent did Zest play? Zest was actually a Sky player for Vision Strikers as well. So if you're actually going to use Lakia only one map and only on one agent being Sky, but you have somebody who's a little bit more proficient coming back on Sky then now you're still back at a six-player roster for Vision Strikers, but you're also getting less and less value out of getting such a high-key player in Lakia uh, in this roster. Yes, he's he's great and proficient, but maybe just doesn't fit into the play style of, um, of, of, of Vision Strikers. So Is this better? I mean, this gets asked in chat. Is this better than Lakia? Or like, is he more desirable to this team, do you guys think, objectively? If you went off of his form before medical leave, it's like a 50 50 push. Mm -hmm. right. If I think he's going to be better than Lakia after coming back from that mm -hmm. medical leave, that's a hard sell to me. Because, mm -hmm. like, how removed right. from the game is he at this point? Mm. All right. So, while we're, while we're talking about this region, let's talk a little bit. I mean, all right. Dax, obviously, your open qualifiers for Champions Philippines don't start to what the, the 28th of January, right? So, still a little bit of time in, in your scene, but. Can you give us a bit of a, you know, a bit of a teaser as to what we should expect to see from the Southeast Asian it even region announced coming yet? to this year, man? Who, who are we, who are we <laughs> I, I, I Where are the what stonks, I think it's you know? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm scared that, like, I might say something, some of my mistakes, like, oh, we're not supposed Thor to talk gets about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay, it's okay, but, but basically, let, let's just play it in a vague way. Everything's going to be happening around, you know, the end of the month to next yep. month, the, the three weeks, whatever playoffs the teams are going to do. And I think one thing that everyone is talking about right now is how it's a whole APAC shebang, right? Instead of just having SEA, we're going to have all these different slots integrate South Asia. I, I think OCE is going to be in there as well. And it's it's a big deal right now that we have actually APAC coming together as one because that, that means the competition is going to be even fiercer. Yes, the SEA squads, they're going to be looking to still try and dominate, still try and be at the very top. But I'm really excited to see, you know, what we saw as a taste from LCQ. How will South Asia compete? How will Oceania even compete? Also, what kind of meta will they bring? But in terms of SEA right now, it's most of these teams finalizing their roster changes. I'll yeah. specifically look into the Philippines. Today, I've, I've been working on my, my usual act power rankings, which I do every single time at the end of an episode. So since mm. it's going to be a new episode, I'm going to be releasing that around this week. And what I've noticed is I had to wait till the very end of like 10 p.m. our time because there was literally a tournament going on and a new team with so many strong faces literally just got announced today as well. So within these two weeks right now here in January that's left, two to three weeks, I'm expecting some of these squads to really find a pecking order in themselves, which squads are really going to be staying the same, which squads are going to be trying at least to push these newer rosters. But in terms of the familiar faces, I have to say, you know, Vision, uh, Team Secret, they're they're gonna be sticking on around the same way. Paper Rex, I do believe they're gonna be sticking around the same way as well. Okay. And I'm expecting those two squads to dominate their regions as per usual. But there's so many other teams that I'm looking forward to. How Full Sense, if Full Sense is really gonna have a bit of a roster mix, roster change if Superbus is going streaming or not. I've heard mm. of those kind of statements. Uh, I want to see what Vietnam is gonna be up to. I want to see what Hong Kong is gonna be up to because. 
the smaller regions that didn't get as much as I'd say exposure in SEA compared to what we saw from Philippines, from Thailand, from NYSG, these might be the sleeper picks that people will be talking about as we come into APAC. And again, just the integration of all the new regions fighting for those slots into Masters. All right, and obviously you're going to tweet here that talks about your power ranking writing process. So obviously you can find that at DaxCast <laughs> on Twitter, but basically it involves a lot of revising, a lot of changing, a lot of going back and uh, reassessing. That's great though. That means you've got a lot of froth in your region and uh, a lot of competition. I mean, and, and you talked about even game changes popping off, which is fantastic. Dax, thanks for coming on the show. We're glad we could finally get you here to share some insights, man. And, uh, and good luck not only to yourself, obviously professionally, but to your region in 2022. Yeah, thanks for having me. That was me getting a bowl of rice real quick, saying, okay, I'm dipping out. <laughs> no reason for mouth. I got the food. See, I've done it. Asian time, guys. Asian time. But thank you for having me on the short and sweet adventure. Oh, always, man. Love you, bro. All right. Until next time, remember, this is Hotel California. So once you come in, you won't be able to leave. We'll, we'll bring you back in, I'm sure, in the future. Thanks for coming. Oh, I love oh, it. I love how you brought God. it back. The Amazing. fucking rice bowl. Closing the yeah, loop, holy. This, this fucking better callback humor than uh, than I hear from most comedians these days. Oh, yeah, dude. He's guy. amazing. That's what I told you, man. I fucking love having this guy on. Yeah, someone, someone rolled his character and gave him Charisma 20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's talk about some roster moves, guys. Let's, let's do a little bit of uh, speculation here. So this first one, I think, is really interesting. Now, I mean, you might remember this guy. Uh, obviously, it was... Uh, a bit of a feature in sort of early North American Valorant, but Shinobi, mm -hmm. previously of Cloud9, then went to, I'm going to say Global Esports as yes. a coach. Coaching in an Indian that, team. Which was the Indian roster, which was pretty good, actually. Uh, we were memeing about it, but this, thing, this roster was actually pretty serious. Uh, Shinobi has been acquired by CLG Red as their coach, which is obviously the Game Changers roster for CLG, if I'm not completely um, mistaken yep. here. So Shinobi makes his sort of return and this is a guy that, you know, since he stopped playing uh, on that Cloud9 roster, remember this is where like Tens was on there or Tens was in, wanted to play with Shinobi and yada, 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 yada. He's been coaching basically this entire time. So mm -hmm. uh, here's the man, obviously still not interested in, in, uh, in sort of trimming the beard. But again, this for me, it feels emblematic of him venturing out into the esports wilderness that is India and just carving out a niche for himself, like Bear Grylls style living, you know, cutting open a camel and just sleeping inside of it and coming back with all these insights from the frontier of esports. So CLG Red gained him as a boon on the coaching staff. Yeah, this is going to be huge. You know, he found himself, he found that he, like he, he was able to reflect, grow in his hair, grow in his beard. Now he's all spiritual and all that shit. He's going to be able to find like some new metas now for CLG he's Red. Ashwagandha daily, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> No, so... I, I think it's still a good pickup too. I think I think overall for Shinobi, one he doesn't have to like wake up in insane hours to coach like an Indian team. But the other thing too is, uh, game changers are already promising like what at least three series this year, right? So there is going to be a pretty hefty circuit for the game changers NNA and potentially going into 22 with a international land. So there's a lot of importance put into teams, a lot of importance put into even organizations to invest into uh, these uh, these women uh, squads uh, and to now bring in coaches and whatnot uh, is going to be even a better addition to all these teams to continue to make the scene very, very uh, competitive. So I think this is a great addition, a great mine in Shinobi uh, from coaching experience, IGL experience, uh, and it's only going to look good for uh, Benita uh, as the captain and IGL the team as well. This CLG red roster, if I'm not mistaken, we're not really punching at the weight that we sort of expected them to. I think they're all right. I think they were getting like top, top three, three like, top. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know yeah. that. So like, um, they had a, a bit of a roster juggle a while back because mm -hmm. uh, Naomi went to version X mm -hmm. right. she was with them prior to that most of their like high finishes were when she was still with the team but they've consistently been top three top five yeah. okay I do I remember it like we were talking with Mel I think saying you know like they always felt like they had the measure of CLG red or at least relatively comfortable so mm -hmm. obviously you know Shinobi being brought in here in the hopes of creating that that parity at the top three or at the high level in uh in game changes because obviously it's still been Unless I missed something, Cloud9 White's still been pretty pretty comfortable uh, yep. you know, at, yep. at the top of that region, but yep. the new yep. year. Well, because, yeah. Go ahead, Yeah, uh, the, the, the big mix-ups for uh, Game Changers is going to be when we do get that international stuff, as Correct. far as yeah. I see it. Correct. It's interesting, though, to see that, like, you're starting to have, I don't want to call it, like, an exodus, but you're seeing 
coaches with like very clear and hard hitting tier one experience pivot into game change. You've got mm-hmm. Shinobi going to CLG Red. You had Emil from Ninjas in Pajamas going to yeah. Guild X. So like you've now got some heavy, heavy hitting brains going into this ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be exciting for sure. Yeah, super fun to watch. Super fun to watch. Um, yeah, I was going to say like there's there's already like all roster shakeups happening within like the women's scene in North America too because I I saw the rumors of for example Arianarchist uh, potentially could be benched here from Exet looking for uh, something new so I think there's a lot of things that are in work woodworks for um, the women's competitive side very similar to like just the main VCT circuit where people are just trying to find the best solution the best team uh, to now topple down Clot Nine at least in North America and to go back to CLG Red. Uh, I think that it's been a lot of top threes with CLG, Dignitas, for example, and uh, Shopify Rebellion. I think those three teams are still very, very close, trying to like just topple down uh, Cloud9's dominance into the game changer scene. Um, but I think that this addition of Shinobi is going to continue to help CLG to maybe consistently be at that number three, number two uh, for now and eventually get into a uh, contending spot against Cloud9 consistently. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to see what... Um we can see from CLG Red. They also, um, and people that may not be aware of this, they are also entering uh, open competition as well now. So like there are more teams than just Cloud9 White that are starting to play in things like NSG Winter Championships. It's happening in Europe as well. Obviously, we know that the, at least the G2 uh, women's team, I think also the Guild X yeah, roster. Gu- mm-hmm. Guild X actually took a, a their first round. Like they're, they're right. entering these and not losing out instantly, mm-hmm. which is like mm-hmm. sort of yep. the detraction a lot of people are going to levy at these sort Correct. of attempts by these teams. So, like, not only are they doing it, but, like, they can hang. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, this is happening now across both regions. CLG Red, obviously, didn't come up with much uh, from the Nerd Street Winter Championship, but they're, they're in the mix there. They're competing. So, I think mm-hmm. that's what uh, I know a lot of the ladies from Cloud9 White wanted to see as well. So, hey, we'd love to see this you know, from everyone else continue to play, you know, outside of game changes when possible. So, really, uh, really quite promising. Let's, let's, okay, this one is, this is fucking, this is fascinating to me. FaZe Clan got gutted at the end of last year. Completely fucking gutted. Um now so hold on who are all these people it, again we were talking about this roster being rebuilt around baby bay right mm. with Corey being linked with tsm zachary departing the roster you know the rest baby jay also moving on dicey and shot up have been practicing with this team mm-hmm. and then we have larry banks and flyer who i have no idea about so you guys are gonna have to fill me in on on the totality of this <laughs> roster as it stands right now what was that so T, uh larry larry banks uh the, it's the teal scene teal scene mm-hmm. lads the okay. the zoomer Correct. dream team roster that was juggernauting their way through north american tier two mm-hmm. and so it's the thing that i don't get about that team is what the hell are people playing man you've yep. got dicey jet player baby Bay, jet player like what, what's going on here you've got like yeah, crack, cracked zoomers you probably want on like duelists or like secondary tertiary entries but then you have Baby Bay, who's what, supposedly a build around. So, like, what are people playing here <laughs> legitimately? Yeah. Like, what, which, which what's going on? Which could definitely on? be a big question mark because even even in Flya, when he was playing with TLC, he was mostly playing like uh, controller, right? He was playing yeah. some Astra, some Viper. But according to some tweets coming out too, apparently Shot Up is the one that's practicing as a controller player, playing as Astra for this <laughs> roster. And I'm pretty sure I, I would like to think that Baby Bay is going to stick over to a jet role. I think Dicey, um, you know, he in a short stint with Hunter Thieves where they actually won first strike, there's been some moments where he was playing Sage on top of that too. So I think if there's been a little bit more development in him playing uh, that support flex role, uh, because I think he's also played some... When he was trying with the guard, wasn't he playing like Sage and Sky, well, if I'm not mistaken? I know that Shot Up on Immortals was playing Astra in their last couple games i think yeah 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 he like switched over to 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 that role we, he was on, like the rainer or some shit before that right i don't know yeah, yeah. he was things. like one of the it was like the roca shot up duo of like these correct, guys are in a one tricks who just farm yeah like the raise reina kind of thing because he was shot up shot up get a, got a lot of credibility from uh, his mechanical skills as a raise i remember him playing on vine you were trying to be like oh fuck Shot up's like a guy to look out for, and uh, and and he has what it takes. And uh, there you go. I think Dicey played like one game as Sky, if I'm not mistaken, with uh, with the guard uh, when he was practicing that up. So there's potential right now with 
uh, what I like from this offseason from these players uh, that have been looking for a team for quite a long time, right? We're talking about the shutups and the dicey here, is that now they're maybe using this off time to um, deepen their agent pool and they're able to do it to be able to support the young fraggers potentially coming out uh, with uh, with Flya and with uh, Larry Banks coming in. Because Larry Banks uh, actually is... A, is uh, he was playing a lot of Soba, uh, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, right? And he was actually really cracked as a Soba for a Teal Soba. team. Exactly. So I think I think like a one for one for to like compare him with with Rockus. I think it's actually quite good. I think this is still going to be uh, a player that's going to support Baby Bay a lot to try to go find information for Baby to get kills. But he could also be that player that could uh, be that clutch player or support player that does very well. I'm actually like. I'm actually looking forward to see what phase is going to look like. Honestly, I feel that this roster for phase right now kind of maybe even looks as good, if not better, than the end era of phase before everybody started uh, to find their own homes with like the Corey and, 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 and everybody else there and Zachary. It has longer legs in my eyes. Yeah. When I look yeah. at the old phase roster, like I think that when they peaked, that was genuinely that team's ceiling. They were never yeah, okay. going to get better than that, no matter how long they stayed together. It was a meta that also really facilitated their play, yeah. right? Like every, it was a perfect storm for them. This roster, I look at it, I'm like, they could a come out of the gates honeymooning extraordinarily hard and just mm -hmm. beat down everyone who comes up against them. But it's a, got a young enough core to it that like this team is going to be getting better for potentially the next three to five years if they stick together that long i mean i doubt it but like that's the developmental opportunity and the only thing too is that if they don't let's say they don't make it into top 12 right for this qualifier they're going to stick around after because they're going to have to wait another three four months which we talked about last week so that is going to be another big question mark into how much do you want to invest from phase's standpoint into the longevity of this roster so this is still the team coached by jdm right yeah, as far as we understand, GDM and Trippy are, uh, to my knowledge, are still in in that coaching staff. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see how this works out. I'm very curious about this Face Clan team because you're. I think Ennis is onto something there. I think like we saw like the best look from that team, like, the very best that those players could sort of put together, and it was the right time. And uh, that that period e eclipsed or rather expired fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, <sighs> let's talk about ambitious projects. Um, evil geniuses. I think they came out of the gates with an extremely ambitious uh, look, and I think they realized pretty quickly that that first iteration didn't work. Turns out that second iteration of their roster also didn't really work. They've obviously uh, parted ways with Branted, Roker, and Temperature from the mm -hmm. team. So the team currently is Bo and Busio. Yep. Which is which I think is is okay. I mean, I I love Roka, but you know, when at some point when you're run one trick in Reina for like the longest time and it's just not working Sick out. Sick Reina player though, to be fair. <laughs> great, great Reina player, but then you're looking at, you know, just how the other maps are being played out. Where you can't really use uh, a Reina unless you're Scream or something like that. But I feel that you need a little bit more of the agent pool coming out of Roka. I think he tried out some Sky, it didn't work out too well. So try to rebuild around Fo and Bustio. I think is 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 still a good move. Uh, I'm just looking forward to see who are they going to pick up. And now I'm going to have to start the rumor mill because, you know, uh, I, are they looking for a coach? Is is Potter still part of this or is she still going to be too busy with uh, with casting BCTs? Anders, are you trying out for EG? <laughs> no. No, I'm not. Just keep flipping it in here. Like every time I talk I'll about call a roster, that just rumor like, right here. <laughs> got, any, got any juice, homie? Yeah. Uh... I, okay. I had to try. I had to try but something. This, look, I, I mean, get sorry, the temperature him. was being heralded as one of the best sovers in North America uh, for a time, uh, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. You know, like these these are three, what I would assume to be really quite good players. So what are EG looking for here, realistically? Is there like, is there any insight as to what, what this team is trying to head towards? Because big, okay, here we go. So this is, yeah, this is temperature obviously departing. This is a big org, big name, presumably decent budget, to find a world-class Valorant team, mm -hmm. they have tried a few different looks, right? They tried a co-ed roster, didn't work out. Now they've, you know, they moved Potter towards the coaching role. They had some really top players from like that Moon Raccoons look and Roka comes in from Space Station and still, still these guys can't find. I think they got to 18th in, in North America rank-wise. Mm -hmm. um, but I think they, what, I mean, what's going They're losing to still uh, some of these tier two, low tier one teams. So. Yeah, yeah. What, what's going on here? Huh? This reads to me as a, we need to finally build a real team move. 
Like, I think that they came in with the co-ed roster, and, like, that was very intentional, but, like, they were just ahead of their time. I think co-ed rosters still just don't have the level of viability that they would need to achieve what an organization like EG is trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Then they basically pivoted from that co-ed roster into a, like, regular circuit team that would be as competitive as they could make it, but the structure of the team preceding that in terms of player roles just didn't do well with the free agents that were available. And now they're saying, okay, what does our team look like? What do player roles look like? And how do we build a team that's actually going to be functional at the highest levels? Because like Roka is the easiest one to pick on here. I'm not like trying to single him out, but like a Reina one trick ain't going to work for you. Like Vans jokingly is like, oh, unless you're Scream, like look at the cast that Scream has built around yeah. him to mm -hmm. make a team style like that work. It's literally like the most role diverse team on planet Earth right now in mm -hmm. order to allow that to function. Can so I, like they had to do something. Can I ask you guys, in, in the last 90 days, 60 days, right? I, I'm just being a scoreboard, Stephen here. Broker has logged more game time on Sky than on, on the Rainer. Correct. Uh, is it fair to call this guy like a, a Rainer one trick? Because it obviously seems easy to say because he was one of the pioneers of, I think, this agent's usage in, in North America. Have you guys seen his sky? Do the, you feel like there's more to him than all right. just it's not, it's not his. It's not his Rainer, which is why I yeah. still call him a one trick Rainer. Like his sky is out there, but like it's, it's, I don't think it's used to like develop what they were trying to do for EG to like set up. I think it was still trying to play a little bit more individualistic, like a, like a flashing for himself. Kind of thing so okay. you're, you're still narrowing down the the pot potential of what you could come bring out with sky with the whole unit uh, as ender say if you have to develop so much into the agent pool around a one trigger uh with arena then you you need a little bit more out of the other players but the other players are also still just playing like one role specifically okay it fair enough yeah just wanted to put that out there because obviously you know no, not slandering the guy, but we, we have we have typecasting yeah. pretty heavily here. I, mm -hmm. I think if you put him on KO, he's going to perform better because it's more individualistic. And like, yeah. honestly, looking at him playing Sky there, that reads as me, like, to me, that reads as EG giving him his fair shake. Mm -hmm. They were like, we need okay. to make changes. Can you learn stuff that isn't Reina and perform really well on it? Mm -hmm. The answer was not at the level that we probably want. And so cool. this happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. Just, just want to put it out there. Curious to see what this team does because it's just a... It's such a well-respected <laughs> name in, in I, FPS, you know? Yeah, I, and I'm curious as well, because if, if we're saying that EG has, like, the um, the backing and the, the money to try to build a good roster right now is, like, just around the corner again is the VCTs coming up at the end of the month. Everybody that's already been in talks of, like, you know, high uh, free agents that are coming out from, like, big teams are, are probably all potentially picked up by now. So if you need to replace three players uh, currently, you're going to have to look potentially back into like the tier two scene of up and comers and still have to go through a rebuilding phase more than building a super team for now. So uh, the next roster that they're going to have to come in with, I think that you're going to have to get, need it, give it some time, uh, potentially even going into another half year investment into this team uh, to see how it's going to pan out. All right. That's fine. I, yeah, like I said, you know, hoping to see more from this sort of a very household name, but in Valorant, never really achieved too much. Can we talk a little bit about this Xset news, right? He's another player that me, for somebody who maybe doesn't keep such tight grip on the region, I don't know about Cryo Cells. I don't know too much about this kind of player, but Xset have always been really well known for just developing insane talent. Like this is the team that brought Zekin in, for example, mm -hmm. you know, that is just really, that really came alive during that sort of renaissance period for some of these sort of tier two teams, right? Def obviously on this team is the veteran head. We know what, you know, Aaron, who, who goes back a long way as well and, and Pure can provide with BCJ. So a lot of really known names and Cryocell's not one of them for me. So what, do we have any insight on this sort of uh, addition? Again, another really talented young player for this uh, exciting team. Oh yeah, so the, the Virtuoso stack that I used to coach was predominantly Canadian and they were super tied into Bossy, Denya, and the Pug Stars team that eventually became Soar, and that's where Correct. Cryo really started making his initial splash. He switched roles and has been on Jet Duelist for a pretty substantial amount of time at this point, and Scrimbucks that I have heard sort of seeping out is that he is utterly fucking insane mm -hmm. like <laughs> when i looked at x set between last year and this year because like I i'm obviously like looking at teams where i'm like oh i wonder 
where I might end up as a coach, as a strategic coach, this, that, or the other thing, like what teams need to make changes where I think they can immediately perform at a much higher level. And when I got to exit going through that list, I was like, no flame to pure R, but if this team had like a true world-class dominant jet player, mm -hmm. they're making a run for top in North America. And so to see mm. Cryo, who is apparently this very like vertical trend line jet player going into mm. this roster, like it, it's it's got legs. Like I'm excited to see what happens with it. These guys scout so fucking well, this Exet team. Mm -hmm. I guess because we, we talked to Psycho and he's very, very involved. You know what I mean? I mean, he, he playing, he's obviously he plays the game a ton and he's, he's in there with his team. But so this is sick, man. I don't know. These guys always seem to be mad incubators for like the less, lesser known talent or at least lesser known to the, like the, the, the fucking, the Mickey Mouse sort of, you know, Valorant fan. I guess guys like you Anders are probably really familiar with a lot of these names coming out of sort of tier two, tier three. But yeah. what do you think, Van Sassi? 2020 was like the year of uh, Envy always being in like the fourth position. And then X set is probably the team in 2021 that was always like fourth place in, in North America. Yeah. Uh, but uh, apparently with the scrim bucks uh, with cryocells, I mean, he was definitely a hot commodity. Him and Xander, both in Soar, were hot commodities, which is why Xander is also joining a, a, a different team as well. Um, what team? Then? I think this is a great addition right now to X set. And then overall, you're looking at X set, they could based on what everybody's saying they're potentially just going to be like top two uh right now uh even at this point is it uh is it just going to be like are they exponentially that much better that they could just topple down cloud nine who's at a great end of year run potentially even at this point too so mm -hmm. having a star player like cryo cells in that roster is really probably that missing piece that that was needed here to allow uh death to control all the pieces for them to do dominate this year i don't know man i love this team this is the team that always used to have to run through the lower bracket of every fucking challenges qualifier mm -hmm. and would make it, you know, would just end up sort of qualifying. Dude, oh man, we need these guys in the Masters, bro. Come on. The thing Except, that's cool is right. it probably wasn't as, uh, Cryo Cells probably wasn't as expensive, right? To to be able to pick up for, such as like any other like jet all-star that everybody's looking for, right? So if you're, for, for the value of what you got uh, potentially with uh, with cryo cells versus what you had to pay to get yay into envy i think mm -hmm. this is like a huge pickup right now uh and you get you get a lot of value out of this and you get probably a, a lot of value out of uh you know eventually selling cryo cells to somebody else if uh, you're going to need to do some some roster changes so i think this is all nothing but big wins here for exit all right i'm a big fan of it Let's move on. Let's talk about oh, the guild roster. I mean, people are competing so heavily for players right now that they're announcing the same fucking players to their team. That's, yeah. fucking, that's fucking wild. Guild <laughs> announced uh, Russ to have joined their Valorant roster. I mean, look, this is a sick roster and they're worth talking about in and of, in and of itself, but a very minor mistake. I think it's just the wrong, the, the wrong Russ because obviously Giants, you know, announce, uh, you know, uh, Russ, the other Russ. I don't know which Russ this is. Which is the Turkish Russ? This Russ. Okay. Russ FPS is the Turkish Russ. Russ Valorant is the UK Russ, but obviously the initial guild tweet, which was deleted and they fixed it. Uh, you know, what, who gives a <laughs> fuck? Anyway, let's talk, about, let's talk about the guild roster though, um, if we may, because I, I wondered where sort of guys like, you know, who, who, with the, the departures from G2, right? Mm -hmm. Where some of these players would, would find themselves. Guild had like what, it's pre I, a lot of like Swedish presence on, on this particular team, right? Leo, Safe bonker you're seen on this team huge changes russ call the mentor and trex uh joining this team and obviously baba who's like a cs legend uh is coaching this team mm -hmm. i think it's already great to have call the mentor in there uh to help out the team as an uh, as an igl for uh, for guild they're they're already going through the vct european qualifiers right now i think overall talking about guild there was already in the in um like some talks that it looks like a pretty decent roster. I'm just going through scoreboard Steven so far through their qualifiers, and they played two matches today where in their round of 64, they were able to beat Elusive 13-0 uh, to zero on a second map. So when it comes down to like gelling and honeymooning and, and having things that click very well, they haven't given more uh, than like six or seven rounds to their opponents going through 
uh, the last two matches at least. So this is actually really good to look at. Actually, all of their matches. I'm, I'm looking at 13-1, 13-2, 13-5. So not a single team got more than seven rounds in a map against them right now, and they've qualified into the double elimination of the open bracket. So this is actually quite good for Guild to start things off. They were already in a position where uh, they were already competitive, but just couldn't make it into like that final stage to make it to Masters or whatnot, because you still had to play some very strong teams in the double elimination brackets, right, in the European scene, because... The European scene, it's kind of like reverse now versus NA. I think that EU is very, very competitive so far. Um, so it's a, it's a great roster to look at on paper right now. I just have to look at these VODs that Average Jonas has been streaming in the yeah. last few days. We're gonna get we're gonna get them versus potentially Giants tomorrow. So the dispute about who owns the real Russ is gonna be decided there and then, I suppose. <laughs> Winner takes um, both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Double That'd or nothing awesome. on Russ, baby. Let's go. Oh my god. Uh, okay, so yeah, we'll get a chance. Obviously, Guild, you know, were, you know, a team that sat outside that top three in in Europe for quite some time. Could never really, yeah. you know, mix it up with the with the likes of your Gambits, with your Fanatics, and your Liquids. Couldn't really break in. So, big change. Uh, obviously, a lot of ambition here. Coldamento departing G two. Feels like the timing was was really quite good for this. I don't know anything about Trex as a player. So, I, I was gonna here. Here's my overreaction of the podcast. I honestly look at this team, and if you were going to say, like, a team won the offseason and became a super team, like, this this is probably it. Okay. If you look at the pedigree that's built out on this roster, it's just nuts. You've got mm. Kolda, who's on G2, and, like, part of the ascension of the Ascend roster. Yep. Leo, who we all know is, like, pretty universally considered either the best or one of the best Sovas in Europe as a region. Trex came up through Honk. So really high caliber free agent team with an incredibly exp uh, experienced and well-proven coach. So his basis as a young talent is extremely strong. You have Safe, who's insane and has now like fully pivoted roles, but is already delivering at a massive scale on Jet. And then you have Russ coming in from 10 star who made that incredible run in Europe towards the end of last year. Like the pieces are here for this team to just be off the scale like I, i'm actually looking forward to that i really want to keep an eye on uh, on safe as a jet right now to see if it's if he's really made a difference right because he's playing from what a sentinel before if i'm not mistaken yeah, exactly like that goal. that was yeah. the thing that shocked me most about this team is like when they came out with the roster i was like what what are people playing and then the safe <laughs> pivot to jet is just like completely out of left field they've got leo not even playing sova on some maps and ko yeah. i would have never assumed that that would have happened but it's clearly working out for them quite well yeah, really quickly yeah, for yeah. those watching um neon is now live in na brazil and latam i think she was accidentally put unlocked. in unlocked. unlocked yeah so they've had to disable her until they fix that so you're still gonna have to fucking you know pay the thousand you know credits to, to get her but she's live in those regions yeah. for those of you that or grind a re uh, grind a contract it's actually not that bad it doesn't take too long to get to, to the level five contract, I think, or four. Yeah, it's level it's level five, right? I think yeah. uh, to unlock it. So there you go. So NA Brazil Latam, you can jump in and just terrorize your fucking teammates. Maybe I'll get to play Chamber now. I guess you know there there is at least that to uh to consider. <laughs> ah, let's let's move on. So we have a huge huge announcement from Team Liquid. They've announced the second roster. Uh, it's in Brazil, and it is uh I, 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 it is a female roster, which is which is huge. Um. Mm. I was this teased from Liquid or is this completely out of the blue? Either way, uh, this is pretty insane. Yeah, I don't know indeed. that it was teased necessarily. I had heard whispers about it potentially happening, so it wasn't like a huge shock to me. But I actually am a little bit unplugged as to what the public's awareness of it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is is this is game that is purple. I think. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I was Sorry. a little bit more unfamiliar with uh, with the roster as well. And if it's Game Lenders Purple, then that's actually pretty good. If you're looking at, again, like uh, an investment into a roster for potentially looking at an international scene of game changers where this team probably has the best chances to actually get into uh, that international stage. I think it's a big win for both of these teams. Uh, salary rise for the uh, salary, sorry, wise for the players and investment wise for the org. And I think even looking at uh, the Game Changers itself, like Jess and Yinsu and others are probably even potentially saying that Game Lenders Purple were like the team to look out for that could topple down that uh, yeah. that they G2 Bozin. They just or... won like a 180,000 Brazilian Real tournament, which is like there you 35k go. US dollar. 
yeah. uh, tournament. I think they won three one in in the final. So, you know, as far as we understand, this is like the best team in in in, in Brazil. Mm. So everybody uh, is looking at this like very similar to any other team in that regular circuit for last year. It's like every team wants to play Sentinels, uh, and eventually there's going to be like one team that's going to finally be able to uh, be able, sorry, to get that win uh, against Cloud Nine White. So I think you're getting the similar type of like arc with uh, this team Liquid roster right now. So I'm looking forward to see what how this is going to pan out. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about. I mean, what I think is so funny about this is NIP teased that they were going to Brazil, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Team Liquid kind of beat them to the punch, and with a and with a game changers team that is the best in the region. So uh, it's pretty sick, as I said. You know, we're seeing a lot of these orgs actually, you know, investing in this region. And it's not just like, look, I'm not saying that all oh, the the Immortal CS team and the MIBR and obviously that stuff was gimmicky, but you know, Counter Strike teams definitely delved into this region uh, somewhat in, for, for male teams, but um, as far as I understand, the the scene for Game Changers teams is fucking massive in LATAM and pati particularly Brazil. This is a team that promises to to really shine, or, or rather a region, excuse me, that promises to shine on the world stage with the assistance of, you know, tournament structures like Game Changers. So uh, this is big and Team Liquid are on the forefront, guys. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. picking up the, the top team in Brazil, can't fault them. We obviously, uh, relatively obscure region to our side but you know i think this is also a great way of uh you know shining light on this region for fans of liquid and and fans at least of you know teams that make big business decisions so i'm looking forward to it gents yeah oh yeah it's gonna be fun to watch what about this one what about what about your boy doma who was the i guess the full guy for fanatics failures and is obviously tight lips over there can't say too much but let's talk about his departure over towards 10 star uh, obviously a team who, you know, I, I guess they lost Russ uh, more recently for one. Uh, but yeah, bringing Dome into the roster seems like a big decision. This team was really impressing us. I mean, I was commenting on how I put a lot of stock in Russ because of his history with 10 stars. So like that just gives you insight into how I hold 10 star as a team. For them to bring in Doma, who obviously I have a high opinion of based off of working with him in the past and his performance at champions like these guys are going big like D doma isn't the type of player that you bring in because you're trying to be top of tier two or lower tier one he's the type of player you bring in if you're trying to chase championships so yeah like th this is a statement signing from them i'll ask you this fans because i can't ask enders for obvious reasons but <laughs> it seemed like Doma departing the Fnatic roster was a bit of a head scratcher, right? Because there wasn't any outward, obvious appearance of underperformance, right? We all thought it was kind of weird that he was the player that, you know, got the chop after their uh, struggles against the, I mean, fucking hell, like losing losing to the team that they did at Champions could, it happens to everyone, apparently, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. that crew roster is fucking freakish, but they, like, what? What what are your thoughts here? Was it a surprise to see him depart Fnatic? Like, what what are your thoughts about his potential here with this roster? Yeah, it's definitely surprising because I feel that when it comes down to the chemistry that Doma kind of had with like you know the ex coach being Anders and everybody else in that roster, it seems like it was still a pretty tight knit group, right? So, you know, him wanting to shave his head, him joking around with his uh, with his teammates, uh, having like all of these. Um, finisher moves whenever they actually win matches it showed that everybody was having a good time as that roster together in the end i don't know if it comes down to what was left in terms of like uh, contract negotiations where maybe as an organization somebody might be available that's going to be like okay will this be the perfect fit as that fifth player right now for fanatic can we actually bring this person in? Is that conversation there? And it just becomes like a business transaction. Because even when you're looking at the results or the reaction of, of Anders right now, it's like, oh, well, super happy for my boy Dolma, made it to a different team. And I don't think we saw anything else that was like ill will between um, Dolma departing and the other players because there was still some great interactions with everybody else uh, after the departure of, of Dolma showing support. So I think, unfortunately, it's more of a business move than anything else uh, when it comes down to, you know, a team that really is chasing that championship, not only for Domo with 10 star, but Fnatic as well, because they're, you show, you saw it right now from Fnatic's side, not seeing a lot of Fnatic in, in a couple of months and yeah. doing the impact that they did was actually quite huge. Props to you, Anders, by the way. Um, but I think that this continues in that, in that similar direction, right? Where now Fnatic is like, okay, well, it's not just like a, a one trick. They weren't lucky going into Iceland. Uh, they just need maybe a little bit more and, 
uh, who knows, whoever they announce as that fifth player might be that that missing piece as well. This is fun. The fucking Heretics roster are uh, kind of mm. kind of leaked. Kind of fucking leaked. So this is the roster, right? So Spanish, heavy Spanish presence here on this team, plus obviously the uh, the Danish inclusions, Tenzi. Penske and Mertz. I know a name on this roster who I haven't seen in a top... Maybe he was on Team Case with Line Pro. But Bromas is like a... He's fucking... Jeez, he's got to be my age. Close to my age, I want to say. Mm-hmm. Going back as like a, an Overwatch pro, uh, represented Team Spain in World Cups and was on a lot of like very strong European rosters before the Overwatch League. Lola was known from Counter-Strike, obviously. Penta were the first team to actually invest in him and, and really managed to sort of take him places. Tensky, of course, was on that Dignitas team. Correct. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Dignitas, Marvel Wind. Well from Counter-Strike. And then Mertz as well that played with like uh, like the tier two era of heroics and North. Uh, so you know some 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 known names that were played uh, within Norn organizations. Sorry, that were trying to scale up to like the tier one scene, but only just dwindled down to around like the tier two competition just because of the results that they had. But they definitely had tier one backings uh, going into what was invested into these rosters. So it, it's it looks like a decent lineup on paper because of those names. But uh, we already saw. They already, now, they already got clear. knocked out. <laughs> let's be clear. Foxy Foxy was the one that leaked this team, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is this is him leaking the roster after he was removed from it, right? Mm. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Just just to be clear, <laughs> cheeky fucker in the... Uh, so uh, we don't know why this is. I mean, I assume something didn't quite gel for him. Maybe too many Spaniards on the team. Don't know. Um, but you know, he obviously, I guess maybe they found a replacement for, or, or someone they wanted sort of in, instead of him rather quickly, but this, this whole Foxy thing a bit is a bit weird, right? Mm-hmm, Heretics mm-hmm. have already been implicated in some fucking weird roster stuff and their, their, their general manager complaining about Carlos fucking just shaking him down for players and poaching them and, and, you know, the knee sow shit and. I don't know, man. This team is confusing, considering that they were in the position to be like one of the best teams in Europe, and then just well, now they're here. Like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah, and then they, they got fucking knocked out of the, uh, the fucking VCT. Yeah. Team Queso, where Foxy landed, also up one map on OG and a round further than Heretics got. By the way, <clears throat> no, not OG yeah. again. <laughs> no, <laughs> OG, OG. Oh, uh, we, we don't have that in the show actually, but OG are also trying another roster look here. I'm, you lost to Valar Mogulus, motherfucker. <laughs> He's got Arya Stark out of the fucking out of the VCT. Shame on you, motherfuckers! Come on, man. Yeah, really. So I, I was watching that. I was watching a little bit of that game uh, yesterday and this morning just to see like how the hell they lost. And I think it's just a one of those things that it's it's like a matter of time. Um, because when you're looking at the roster of Heretics for the first map they played is that they played on Bind, and then you had. Lowell, first off, not playing a Sage, where we kind of known Lowell for when his Giants time, playing as that Sage IGL and doing very good. But it was actually Mertz that was playing the Sage on Bind, and then you had uh, Lowell playing Brimstone. So he's still playing a lot of old school stuff in, in terms of trying to play out of Pulse Plants uh, with Mollies and Pulse Plants um, um, uh, lineups. Uh, but I just saw, like, mechanically, like, Mertz opping and then running straight into A short to put a wall up. It gets instantly broken down, uh, and then he gets killed. He's throwing, like, a slow orb on retakes, uh, rotating from Sands into Hookah, and throws a slow orb into Window and slows himself out where he can't really come out and support his team on a retake. So I think it's just, like, players still trying to get used to, like, the mechanics of everything of how this game is being played uh, to look a little bit better later on. Uh, because the second map that he won was Icebox. In Icebox, he played the standard thing, double duelist with Reina Jet, uh, and then uh, the Viper Sage and Soba, right? So then you just basically aim out and fight, and you were able to just win that matchup. But then you played Fracture, you need a little bit more structure, didn't work out in their favor, so... Brand new roster, we just talked about it before. Um, I think when it comes down to, like, understanding how the Ancients are going to be played, then it'll be a little bit better for Heretics, but... <laughs> Uh, I, it, I, sorry, like at least they have a fucking VRL and like, a, don't they have another open qualifier? Yeah, some shit like yeah. that. You know, they have a chance. Imagine. They have a chance. Let's okay. not talk More about that. More than one shit. chance. This next topic, I need to. Yeah, I need to yeah. sedate myself a little let's, bit. Let's so. let's not talk about that that portion. Yeah, we, we have to about talk about. Ago. We have to yeah, talk exactly. about T one. Hold on. Oh my god. Give me the fucking happy gas. Oh, this team is killing me. All right. Well, Automatic has announced that he's leaving T one. Um. So there's that. 
also skadoodle so team team one obviously not a great uh hmm, um haven dare i use the pun for for sort of x counter-strike pros um mm. neither skadoodle nor automatic workout who the fuck knows what scar's doing by the way um chilling so, he might go back to streaming right so. I mean, may as well. Fuck me. I mean, may as well go the. Why is everyone going the Brax route after being on this fucking team, Van Silly? It's like this team just drains the passion for competition from all of their fucking players because after being on this team, they don't want to be on another veteran. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Steel, Twyfo, Curry. Uh, and was not Seven? Yeah, uh, Seven. Ru so Seven up. comes across to this team from other things. So this kind of. Mm. This kind of leaks into the next thing we're going to talk about. So we'll do it all at once. Yeah. Um, what the fuck's going on? Why am I always asking this question about this team? What the fuck's going on with T1? <laughs> um, I, I guess it's just trying to find the, the, the solution. I think very similar to like 100 Thieves, uh, you know, because 100 Thieves, when you're looking at that roster being built up, it was like a superstar lineup of, of Counter-Strike players that made the switch. And because of the pedigree that they had within their Counter-Strike um experiences that maybe would translate well into success into uh into valor which is similar to what we saw into t1 when you had days coming in you had skadoodle trying things out you have automatic you have um brax you have just so many players even azk on top of that when you're looking at the early days of t1 so there's just a lot of players that had so much pedigree uh into their their tenure of counter-strike and of course in uh in uh in overwatch with azk for example but it just didn't translate into success for t1 in this game either so you're going through potentially this revolving door consistently of trying to find that right solution and the right composition uh and and now that you have steel you know they're looking for an igl they finally have one at steel they're looking for young fraggers they have it with seven that joined the roster at the same time you have curry that took the responsibility of igl and also grinds his game a lot and is also very young too so you finally have like a mix of people that are just playing uh valorant and getting into valorant and just um excelling at it so far with yeah. veterancy into the igl of steel then maybe finally you have something uh that's but the that's foundation the is good now. right eventually exactly this exactly. team has like a really promising foundation of veteran players like steel who we still believe have years in them as as igls at least mm -hmm. and then sort of younger talent like curry who already showed he could step up into an igl role and do a pretty damn good job so he's definitely like a team player and able to play like a bunch of different roles and then seven who we still haven't got to see play yet we've ever mm -hmm. fucking seen this guy play well he got dropped from 100 thieves without ever taking to the field so to speak because obviously they didn't mm -hmm. compete in anything over over the holiday so you know, enough. all of the expectations for seven for like the average viewer are driven by hype and and by optics and not actually by performance so well what he... should we think about this he he comes from that same teal seam roster, literally gotcha. like the cracked zoomer roster, <laughs> where where you have uh, Fly who came from it, Larry Banks who came from it, and Seven was one of the other core pieces of that roster. Mm -hmm. He was he's seen in like a similar light to like uh, Zekin is probably the best example when he went to X set where really young player, crazy from high Noble, stocks, yeah. like expectations for all of these guys is super super high and. Really, to me, when 100 Thieves picked up seven, it was like a speculative investment almost. Mm -hmm. Like, the, yeah. it was, we want to see how this person develops and put him under a contract just in case. And I was actually just pulling it up because I was curious whether or not Steel was at 100 Thieves still when seven was there. Because does Steel know something about seven that isn't public knowledge and is now just like, please come with me sort of thing? But it looks like they were two ships in the night. I think they literally like swapped at the same time. So Yeah, there's there's potential right there. I think there's there's something maybe in terms of practice, trialing that, that Steel saw into uh into seven. And when it just find when you need something that just clicks in into what Steel's looking for, it could work out because Steel going with Curry as well is gonna be another great one too, as uh, you know, they've probably competed with against each other uh back in like the last days and the last years of steel playing csgo so i think this roster is going to look pretty good i think uh is it going to be are, are they going to be able to qualify into like the top 12 teams i think so uh looking at this roster too so i'm uh are they going to be able to make it to masters probably not that's we, that's probably yeah it. Do we know anything about hunter thieves now is it is it, is it just still the three still players well just three for, i'm pretty sure it's three plus the, eccles functionally confirmed oh, yeah, by like yeah, eight insider eccles. sources over the last 
Yeah, and the latest, the latest, uh, the latest rumor from George this morning was that their fifth player was going to be BBJ. So B BBJ would potentially be the fifth player for Hundred Thieves going into the lineup. So it would be Eccles, BBJ, uh, Ethan, uh, Hiko, and and, uh, and who? Sorry, Asuna. 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 Exactly. So, I, so yeah, BBJ, I think is another one that that had a great opportunity to to showcase his skills with Phase. Um, Phase didn't do much for his stock though, really. It hasn't done much for his stock, but I think I think he's definitely one of those players that has like a. I think it's just a, a super chill dude. Like I, for fun, like I ended up somehow in the same lobby as him and Tarek playing Halo, uh, and he's just a chill dude playing fucking overall just in, in Halo, but just a guy that that has a mindset that wants to grind and win. So I think uh, I think it's there. He doesn't have like the pedigree name of like oh well he's played he hasn't played for like a top team. So why would a player like that go into a, such a uh, prestigious name as Hundred Thieves? But I think as a Sentinel player, uh, if you're looking for a Sentinel players that could that could actually replace Steel one for one within Hundred Thieves, I think you're getting more out of Baby J in that roster which, than okay. Steel would with that roster. So I think okay. it's it's not bad. Um, Automatic just got announced. Going back to EG CS:GO team, by the way. Nice. Well, that's ah. what we wanted. That's what we wanted. Him, yeah. him, Stewie. Uh, you know, actually, there was a tweet from Pimp earlier today. If you guys don't know Pimp, he's uh, you know used to be an ex player for Team Liquid uh, in the pro scene for CS:GO, yeah. and also now an uh, one of the main analysts into the an CS analyst. circuit. So it's like uh, he's like, hey imagine this so right now you actually have automatic that that left t1 and is a free agent then you have stewie that left team liquid that's a free agent that could potentially join together and now that automatic and t uh, and uh, skadoodle are not with t1 anymore that they could go back into cs they're and really then... trying to save american counter-strike yeah right? and then you have that's rush insane. that's also a free agent so what if you picked up this roster and it was like yeah. as, as Quick, a crew, pull out the defibrillator so <laughs> exactly <laughs> it was it was actually the roster in 2018 that won the csgo major for na so he was just basically oh, trolling God. with that with that post but i thought it was fucking hilarious jesus christ yeah i think it's like rush circuit <laughs> breeze on that team as well yeah, talk about that, that's counter-strike all right so there it is i think we've covered basically most of the big stuff for for this sort of week guys and lg been on the show what? Yeah, sorry, I, I wanted to pull that up, but before we close it off too, because it was uh, LG just also announced that your boy Dre and a Proto are not part of LG anymore in the last Ooh, hour. Oh shit! Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so that's uh, that's that's a big one too. So I think LG is in that same type of like, okay, well, fuck, we're at the end of the month, we need to They're find like a roster. They're running out of time for LG, and I and I wonder what's going to happen with with these two players too, because yeah, I you hope know, Dre and a Proto have time to find new teams as well. For exactly, sake. exactly. That's, Bro, uh, I hate teams leaving this shit so fucking late, dude. It's actually come on, you guys had months of notice. Um, LG, you guys weren't doing anything for the last three months, dude. How long does it fucking take? It's like, why did EG take so fucking long to decide they weren't yeah. going? Oh, Not even playing in like NSG monthlies or anything either. So I was, I was really wondering what's happening with uh, with Luminosity at this point. Bro, NA scene, what is going on? This looks, it looks like an absolute fucking dog and pony show compared to what yeah. we're you know, like. Europe is coalescing really nicely, and I is. So I don't know. So even then, thankfully, thankfully coming up into the VCTs, uh, I don't think that Neon's being in the open qualifiers, but there are some changes that we, you know, not only on the maps that we talked about the latest patch, but there's also the gun changes, right? So the Ares change, the Spectre change, all that kind of stuff uh, is going to come into play uh, into the uh, into the next qualifiers. So, uh, man, last minute, last minute uh, patch changes going into last minute roster changes. This is going to be a very interesting and rocky North American VCT at the end of the month. Mm. Strap yourselves in, motherfuckers! It's, and then we'll find out like who Anders the... plays for. Yeah, or who's right. coach? Yeah, <laughs> when when is Anders when is Anders find a spot? You know what I mean? Uh yeah. NA is cramming the night before the exam. Yeah, I'm just putting it out Standard. there. Standard. And the exam is worth 100 percent of their fucking grade. It's Unlucky. like one of those. Sounds like my years. Sounds like my yeah. years at school. Classic well, American education system. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might have gotten away with it. I don't know if NA will as a region though. Guys, thanks for coming on the show. And thanks for uh, joining us for a whole episode, man. It's great to have you on. Yeah, of course. Always a pleasure to be on with you guys. Hell Fans? Yeah. Thanks, man. Great. Talk to I, you soon. I didn't say anything. Next week. I, I didn't say anything, so I don't know why you're thanking me, but yeah. No, I was talking oh. to Anders. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Anders. <laughs> <laughs> So Vance, hurry up. Hurry up and get healthy and get back to squatting, bro. I'm catching up. Be careful. I can't wait. I can't wait. Are you mm. catching up? For yeah, 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 dude. Yeah, yeah. I did 415 like 260, PR? 265 pounds for six. So, you know, I'm getting there. I'm just doing I'm doing the, the, the large rep, the, the high reps though. That's all. Okay, um, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do some 365 for five when I'm back. 
me. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining us on the show today. Obviously, we're on the front page for the first time, which is which is sick. Really great pleasure. Uh, a real big pleasure to have you here tomorrow. The breakdown is on at 12 p.m. PDT, so it starts now later than battle ranting. Uh, it's a show that if you're if you're not sick of me yet, then <laughs> here's a chance to really fucking get an overload of yours truly. I'll be on the show with uh, Sir Scoots. We're gonna be talking about the broader esports world Wait. and what's sort of going on. Um, there's uh, obviously a, a ton happening that needs to be discussed outside of just Valorant. We might touch on Valorant. Who knows? That's... 12 p.m. PDT. You what guys just is? sit behind tables? I thought there were yeah. a bunch of TVs. No, no, no. It's, it's it's AR, mate. It's actually XR because there's like VR and ARL. I don't know. It's some some fancy bullshit. I haven't seen a studio <laughs> like that. It's really nice. So they're going to put me inside another TV again, I'm pretty sure. Um, All right. Thanks for being with us. See you next week, 11 a.m. PDT on Tuesday. Thanks to everybody that drops a follow today. Please come back for tomorrow's show, the breakdown of Valorant next week. Until then, enjoy your Valorant. We'll see you next week to talk about much more. <laughs>